No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and you know that we back with my favorite white boy. Yes, sir. You know he raw. He's a f- white boy. 1090 Jake, how you doing, man? I'm good, but how you doing? Excellent. Can't complain. Actually, I'm feeling kind of sh- but I'm, I'm ready to like turn it on for the, the duration of this interview and yeah, use up all it. my energy for the day. We got we to gotta turn up. Yeah, we got to turn up. I slept like 12 hours last night, so hopefully that'll have me I powered up. I didn't sleep at all, bro. Yeah, because my friend from, that I grew up around sent me a selfie with you in the airport. I'm like, oh, sh-. he flew out last night. Yeah, well, that was that's when I flew over to New York. Then I was in Brooklyn getting drunk. Then I ended up in the projects in Harlem. And then... um. Yeah, got on the plane. Wait, you flew to New York and From just Boston to New York and just turned up all night. The whole night. And then I didn't sleep until I got on the plane. Why, what are you doing in New York? You got connections out there. Yeah. Really? Okay. I'm in New York all the time. But you were in Brooklyn and Harlem. Yeah. That's a trek. Mm-hmm. Who you, who are you hanging out with out I there? I can't tell you. All that. <laughs> we, we little situations I got going on. Situations, huh? Yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. I wish I had some street connections like that. <laughs> Sounds fun. Man, this thing. I almost feel like it's a. Okay, yeah, that's better. I was, I was like blowing into the microphone. It was sounding kind of weird. Our AC is out today, by the way, also. I feel it. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling it, too. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird. Normally, it's like too cold in here. Today, it's like a little too hot. We in here. So, okay. I figure we'll start off light, and I'll just ask you about, uh, you took like a multi-month break from the YouTube streets at one point uh, yeah. to build out your new studio and everything. How was that, and how was uh was it was it a weird feeling to have to kind of take that time off? No, nah, it wasn't weird. I enjoyed the break too much. Really? So in the middle of setting everything up, I kind of just fell off mm. and was like, you know what? I kind of enjoy because the money was still there. Right. And I'm just not doing shit. You know what I mean? And what it did is it put me on a decline. Mm. To where I started to see the numbers going up because I'm not putting out anything. Yeah. So, you know, obviously that affects the, the you, money. And you still else. make a little bit on YouTube from your back catalog. You, you, you but make it, it something that you're comfortable with, but yeah. you're not, you know what I'm saying? And I just got comfortable not doing nothing. But you had years where you were grinding out like a video a day or every other day or I whatever. I was going crazy, bro, to the point that I wasn't doing anything else. Yeah. Like it was just nonstop videos. Like I wake up. 12 hours on one video, go to sleep, wake up, repeat, mm. and the money was going crazy. And you do everything. You edit too, right? I do all my own. I don't have anyone that does anything for me. Right. Thumbnails, editing, all of that is mine. So, I mean, I could probably get somebody and it would be a lot better, but I've done everything and I like how I do it. I'm very, like, specific with it. Uh-huh. So I do it all. And when I had that break period, I just enjoyed it. But there was also in the back of my mind, I'm like, all right, when I come back, is everything still going to be the same? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If I drop a video, is it still going to hit the same? And when it did, I got that feeling of, damn, people really rocking with me and were waiting on me. You know what I mean? But but you didn't feel like you lost any of the fan base when you came back? You felt like they were were excited for it? Yeah, well, they were. Mm. I mean, that's what it showed when the video started going crazy. Because, of course, you get in the DMs like, oh, you you fell off, you this and that. But those are just the haters that always hate anyways. But that's a weird feeling to know that there are people who are really, like, you are a part of their day. No, nah, that's 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 the humbling experience of it. That's, the, that's what makes me want to do more, mm. is knowing that there's people waiting on me, supporting me. Because the whole time I'm not on YouTube, I'm still in real life. So I'm running into people, mm. telling me, like, yo, bro, we're waiting on this and that, we're, da, 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 we're rocking with you, whatever. It just makes you want to, you know what I mean? Mm. People really because Vlad has been off YouTube for like a week now, maybe a week and a half, because yeah. his uh, monetization got messed up and he hasn't been uploading anything. And that really made me realize, like, oh, I watch like 20 to 30 minutes of Vlad's clips every single day. And it actually feels like there's like a hole in my entertainment for the day yeah. when he's not publishing content, which I, I haven't had to feel like that because for the last however many years I've been watching this channel, like seven, eight years, I have never had to be without Vlad's content. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. But so, okay, you're you're outside though, because I feel like for a while you were you were in the crib just grinding out videos. But you, are are you taking that break? Did that reconnect you with being able to like live your actual life and and have more real life experiences? Nah, yeah, for sure. Because when I first started off, especially when the money was hitting how it was, and I'm just nonstop pushing out content, I wasn't spending any money. Mm. So I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't buying anything. I was just letting it stack up, and just you know so. 
the break and slowing down and because it's supply and demand. If I'm pushing out everything nonstop, sometimes it'll hit, sometimes it'll wind down because it's so much content. Mm-hmm. If I break it up and I slow it down, it hits even harder because people are wanting it. Right. You know what I mean? And that gives me time to enjoy the luxuries that come with this. Right, definitely. But are you like out in the clubs and shit? Yeah. You get sections? Yeah, every time. I'll be in the <laughs> section by myself with a bottle and like really? 10 bitches. Yeah, I swear to God. 10 bitches? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. You don't I've, re- I've never thrown less than 1090 in the club. Really? Nobody can say that. That's Not the a, number. Any bottle, bitch, any stripper, any, I've never thrown less than 1090. And you do that in Boston as well, or you just Everywhere. do it when you're out of town? Everywhere. Really? Yeah. See, I thought that the 1090 jig that I knew was a little too low-key for that, and that you weren't really trying to court that kind of attention. Nah, yeah. Nah? Well, I mean... You, you you can figure out certain shit, certain situations. You can oh, because they probably want you there too. Prepare shit. No, nah, I don't do that. Oh, okay. I don't do like the promo and shit. I just pop up. Okay. So if I got somebody hit me up, but yo pull up here, I'm not pulling up there. Right. I'll just show up somewhere and do something. Especially if I'm by myself. Like if, I'm, if it's just me. Right. You know what I mean? But if it's an event, you bring your people. Everything's good. Whatever you hang out. Because it's different in Boston. Because I mean, I don't go to the clubs out here, so I don't know how it is. But like, you're a kind of big fish in a relatively small pond in Boston. Because it's not really known for the nightlife or the the hip hop side of things. Is like underrepresented in Boston. Yeah. Well, the one club that I go to, everyone knows me. Yeah. So it's like, and that's where Millie's had his uh thing after his show because he invited me out to his show. Shout out to him. Oh, okay. So um, the after party was at that same club. So. The manager, all the security, they all know me. So I go in there, just hang on. It hit different. Yeah. I like it. Um, okay. But in terms of, like, your content, what has changed since we did that last interview? Because sometimes I see you experimenting a little bit here and there and doing different types of things. Like, I remember I seen a video that I think was one of the lesser viewed videos on your channel in recent memory, and it was something about somebody leaving their kids in the car and they they Mm -hmm. fucking died from being in the car or something. And I was like, I remember seeing the title and being like, that's outside the usual 1090 Jake wheelhouse. Well, it's it's not, though. Okay. Because the first interview, interview that we did, when you started, like, watching a lot of my shit and was shouting me out in the beginning, I was covering all aspects of crime mm. from crazy shit to you know what i mean then i started covering the rapid cases that started to go up and then the whole snitching thing just turned that just propelled it people sure. people act like they don't want to hear who's snitching but those videos that's some of your biggest shit right now yeah. i mean that's a lot of what people really know me for right now like when i meet new people that don't know everything else the prison videos that i was doing mm. my own stories the criminal shit that i was doing they know, oh, he'd be the one, he'd be exposing the rapids. Right. Because when it's I have a conversation one. about you with people, it's like they know that you did prison time or whatever, but it's kind of like a mystery to them, which is sort of weird because if you had been tuned into the 1090 it's Jake channel early, it's like that's what you were talking yeah. about. And then at some point you kind of pivoted into doing all this outsider stuff. But would you have been the kind of guy who was like rapidly paying attention to the YSL trial? before it became your job to sort of document this stuff. Because for me, even like, you know, sometimes it's like, wow, I'm really tapped in with like a lot of stuff underground rap wise and stuff that would I have been tuned into it if it wasn't like the thing that I was doing for a living? Like maybe not, especially not at this point in my life. No, I feel like that's what surprises a lot of people when we talk about it. Like I really don't give a fuck what rap is snitching. Mm. If I wasn't getting paid off of it, I wouldn't, I don't give a fuck. Right. What they got to do with me. You know what I mean? But the fact that I can show you like, yeah, your favorite rapper that you thought was so gangster, the mm. one that you want to be like, the whole rat. Right. So it was like, you know, because that was the whole reason I started doing the snitch shit. Because in the beginning, when we were doing the prison videos, like me and all the people that I brought on that I was doing time with, it always had a message with it. Mm. Like, look, we did this. It fucked us up. We had to go through all this shit. Don't do what we did. So then when I started doing the snitching shit, it was like, look, rap is influential. Mm. A lot of people will listen to shit and then stop wanting to do it. I mean, you can look at it with the drugs. You can look at it with the violence. Everybody, when they start rapping about 30s and switches, everybody got a 30 and a switch now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you can't say it isn't influential. With that being said, if you got people following in your footsteps thinking that you this super big gangster, and we showing like, look, that's not really who he is. When he got jammed up, he told. When you got jammed up, you didn't say shit. Now you got a life sentence because you thought you were gangster like him. The whole mm. time, he ain't even that. It's, it is kind of a, a weird thing for you to put yourself into the position of being like the, the guy who's sort of in charge of 
saying who's who did the right thing or did the wrong thing yeah, in hip hop, right? Is that even, ever a lot of weight for you to take on? Nah, because I don't really carry that weight. That's something that people try to put on me. Like, mm. who put him in charge? Nobody put me in charge. Yeah, this I is just figured out how do to whatever get this you want. Shit. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of the people that criticize what the fuck I do can't read a piece of paper. Mm. That's why you ain't in charge because you can't read an arrest report. <laughs> you don't know how to fucking talk. Never mind read. So if you could figure it out, then you could start doing what I'm doing because right. nobody has a problem. That's the thing. Nobody had a problem with anything that I've done in the beginning. Right. Everyone had a problem when they couldn't relate anymore. Mm. So what I mean by that is nobody had a problem when I was broke and fucked up. Nobody had a problem when I was still in the hood. But once I started making the money, getting jewelry, getting this, getting... Now you can't relate because you're stuck in the same position. You seen me go up. You stayed where you're at. Now you hating. Mm. Now you mad because you didn't elevate. Right. Now they have a problem with it. And and now people who are like established personalities or established businessmen in hip hop are looking at you being like, how the fuck is this white guy able to be out here clearly having an impact on the state of the discourse in hip hop and, you know, being able to really affect people's careers and like, you know, be in a position where certain rappers, maybe their career takes a massive hit and you could kind of blame it on. Just in general, because realistically, if it wasn't you, it was going to be somebody else. Somebody else was going to figure out how to document this kind of stuff. But they end up looking at you and you're kind of like the scapegoat, like at a certain point. And and we can get into more of the details of it in a bit. But like the Boston Richie thing, he's somebody who tried to make it personal with you because he saw the fact that you were really like the one who was kind of putting his shit on blast. Right. Yeah. I mean, when they say I'm doing this and that and it's affecting people this way, that way. I think Vlad and uh, Lil Duval made a post saying whose career really ended from being exposed as a snitch? Mm. Who is it affected? If anything, it's promo. That's what I think they said. Something something along the lines of that, right? You believe that? I mean, I don't give a fuck. How I look at it is how you got a problem with a motherfucker exposing snitches, but you got rappers killing each other, rapping about killing each other, got everybody else killing each other, mm. but you're mad that that person snitched and somebody else exposed it, and then they try to put the whole race thing into it. You know what I mean? Like, what's really the problem? Because everybody can talk about kill, 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 and that, that's fine for the culture. Mm. Who's complaining? Who's really doing something? Like, who's stepping down on the rappers? And You know what I mean? But you expose someone as a snitch. But he made it. But he this and that. Why do you? I don't understand. But that's the crazy thing, too, is that a lot of these rappers, like, some of them might have negative things to say about you. The ones who probably have a lot of positive things to say about you are pretty much not going to say it publicly. But all the rappers who are serious who are serious about the street code and shit. Man, I'd be having a bunch of them hit me up. I was though. thinking you probably do, right? But I got hit up by one of the most legendary in my eyes rappers mm. out of the South. You know what I mean? So when I got the message from him and I read, and he's just like, yo, keep pushing, keep doing what you're doing. They hating because you white, fuck them. So when I read that from him, it was just, you know, that meant everything to me. And, I mean, he said he's going to speak on it when it comes time. You know, he's a recurring guest over on Vlad. So mm. if he speak on it, he speak on it. But that's a big name for me to speak with. But I've spoken to a lot of people behind the scenes. I speak to a lot of them because nobody ever finds out who I'm talking to. Right. I'm not posting it. I'm not posting DMs like, oh, yeah, guess who just hit me up. Da, 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 da. But there's a lot of rappers that ain't with that shit. They just don't speak out on it because... Of what comes with it. It ain't even like the beef shit. It's the industry shit. Right. Well, I don't know how much access Young Thug has to YouTube right now, but assuming that he has some uh, ability to see what's going on on YouTube, or at least he has people talking to him, telling him what they're seeing on YouTube, he's somebody that realistically should be thanking you because there are interrogations and, and statements that have been given and stuff that the world might not necessarily know about if it wasn't for somebody like you putting it out there, right? Yeah, I mean, they tried to say... uh Thug, snitched, or whatever, whatever. I did a video on that, and his sister thanked me. Yeah, see? Me. Okay, there you go, yeah. Yeah, so, but the thing is, when I dropped that video, everybody assumed I had something negative to say. Mm -hmm. So, all the comments, and, you know, it hit all the blogs, everybody's talking cash shit, but his actual sister is like, yo, I appreciate you for clearing his name on that. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of people, they don't even want to see what it is. They just have an opinion and hate on it. Right. Oh, it's a white boy. Oh, he making money. Oh, he this and that. Oh, da, da, da. Is what it is. Okay, but before we even get into any specific situations, what has changed in terms of like the public's ability to get information about things that are going on both behind bars, 
in interrogation rooms, et cetera. Because e even something like the fucking Island Boys video that you did where there was like body cam footage from the cops of the Island Boys, you know, asking to be put in PC and shit yeah. like that. That was like kind of jaw dropping to me because if I was in his exact position, like being booked into the jail, I would never think in a million years like, oh, this is footage that might end up on YouTube one yeah. day. Now... I would definitely be thinking that, like, oh, I better not say any weird shit right now Shit's because going crazy, it's going to yeah. be on the internet sooner I mean, or later. Chicago Rez, shout out to him. He just dropped a video Bingo. of Lil J with a punk sitting on his lap, and people were trying to say it's fake. Bruh told me how he got it. So really? I know for a fact it ain't fake. Really? See, this is the thing, right? With me personally, I only knew how to do it to a certain extent because I was requesting my own paperwork before I ever got on anyone else's shit. Okay. I requested my case shit. I went, I, I didn't go there, but I emailed the prison and requested all my disciplinary reports telling you why I went to confinement, the fight, the this, the that. It's everything that I got into in prison. You know what I'm saying? So. And you were getting that just because you were curious or because you wanted to show somebody? To do videos or? on it. Oh, yeah. do videos about this your own shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you never got a fight in prison? Okay, I got multiple DIs. Right. What the fuck you mean? I did over a year in confinement in prison. Uh -huh. Oh, you didn't do all that? All right, well, here's the paper. You know what I mean? So it was that was back when it was like, oh yeah, you do, you were in prison, but you weren't doing this. So I'm bringing on everybody I was in prison with. Right. You know what I mean? So there was nothing that you could question at that point. But I was trying to like prove myself in a sense because mm -hmm. I was new to the YouTube shit. But um, more or less, I always looked at TMZ news stations. Like, how do they get access to this shit? And then I found out anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. So there's people now. I mean, there's so many people that's just putting out body cam. It's records requests. That's all it is. They're either the police department, the sheriff's department, the DA, the clerk. You send in a fucking request. Adam 22 got arrested on this day. Here's his date of birth. I'm requesting all body cam footage. But they're either going to hit you with an invoice or they send you the video for free. So you have to know that, like, you have to have some basic idea of what occurred. You can't just say, like, hey, I want to get all the records you of John be Brown. You want to specific because if you're not specific, no, you can do that. Okay. It's just going to take longer. Uh. You know what I mean? Because Chicago Riz did that with Vaughn. Right. And found every fucking recorded incident with King Vaughn. That's how he was able to put out the thing where Vaughn was asking for PC. And you have to pay dead. for that? It depends on where you're getting it from. Okay. Some places you do, some places you don't. Pino, you remember him? Oh, yeah. He was just hitting me up about you. So that was like $800 for all of his shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because you got footage of him from like when he was super young, like over 10 years ago, right? He was like 20 or something. Okay. Because like he's older than me. Okay. He's in his 30s. But it was like. But Boston Richie's videos were free. Really? Yeah. And you were the first person to obtain those? Yeah. Damn. Legendary. That crazy? But so, okay, you could like, because, okay, when I saw the Island Boys footage, I thought, oh, maybe it was a Florida thing because there's, like, different laws in Florida, well, Florida about reporting. See, that's why I say Wack 100 is a dumbass because he speaks on a lot of shit he don't know about. Okay. Um, Wack was saying nobody can get that type of shit, this, that, and the third. Florida has the sunshine laws. Mm. Everything is public. I have a fucking thing in my phone that I just copy and paste. Pursuant to da-da-da, I state the statute, I am requesting this, that, and the third, and you get it. So anything from body cam footage to fucking whatever – you're going to get it all. Because that's Florida will always be like reported on more in the media and shit because of the fact that they have those sunshine laws. So there's this whole like myth or like, you know, ongoing meme of like Florida man, because there's just more access for the media to things that are going on in Florida well, that would there, other be some crazy shit going on in Florida. Too, <laughs> right. Florida. But it's easier to get access to the reporting on yeah. it. Right. Well, I think that the reporters in Florida understood that they can capitalize on the craziness within the state. Right. Because they have the access to that shit, that shit goes crazy. Right. So it's like, damn. So okay. The but that's but see, that's what I'm saying though. People complain about being broke, this and that. All you gotta do is make fucking requests all day, put it right to YouTube, add your two cents. At this point in time, he stepped out of the car. Now you make six figures. And you're not holding this information close to your chest either, because you're huh. you're happy oh, to you know how many share. People right. I told to do this same shit that I'm doing. Right. What? The, why didn't do it? What the fuck? Oh, I want to get stuck. Do what I'm doing. Request these videos if you don't want to put your face on it. Request pay. Dude, it blows up. It's it's weird to me. Body though. cam footage, the stupidest shit goes crazy and it makes mad money. How are you able to, like, 
like how are you able to say I want all the footage of King Vaughn and then what they have all these different video clips tagged as his name like his government name and then they're able to just compile that and give it to you it's well, fucking yeah, crazy it's public records so or they, even they like have the, the, to, they have to keep it on file or if it's a part of, like this is the thing I I know we're gonna get into uh, Greedo's case right I'm sure at some point in time yeah we gotta so I had already requested the video mm. for the arrest and the interview with the DEA I was emailed back saying. They were destroyed because of the retention period. So in Florida, certain counties, there's going to be a period in time where it's like if a year goes by or two years go by and nobody requests it, they destroy it. Uh -huh. Now, if the district attorney who prosecuted the case still has a copy of it in evidence, you can get it from them. But I was told there's no video for Greedo that I can get unless you go through the DA. I didn't hit up the DA. So okay. if he can still get that. Definitely. Okay, we'll get into that. But so I, I just want to stay on the the King Lil J thing. So how do you how do you know that that's him? And how did like like that 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 is pretty damning right there is if they requested video footage of him it's and not, then they it's got it's not that they requested video footage of him. It's that if me and you were in jail together, right? And let's say I punch you in your shit. Uh -huh. And I get out of jail and I'm like, yo, I hit Adam 22 when I was in jail. Oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. All right, bet. Because I know that, you know, once I hit you, I got in trouble for it. So I send in a request for my disciplinary report. When I get the copy of my disciplinary report, it's going to say, on this day, inmate 1090 struck inmate 22 in the face. Okay, now I'm requesting the video from that incident. Right. And but that's, the, that's but the, how you got Lil J. The Lil J thing, there was no incident. It was just him with a, a dude have a sitting on his. You can't punk sitting on you. You can't have so any that type that of, might have been written up a, at some yeah, point. Yeah, oh, you okay. can't do shit like that in jail. Right. What the fuck? That you can't do. They got names for certain shit like that. So he got in trouble for that at some point, probably. But I understand. Yeah, mm. you can't be involved romantically in a fucking jail, and the fact that you're doing it with a punk. All right. Is. I and he's denying the shit too. <laughs> he he put out a whole long uh, video recording. He uh, might as well just live his truth. <sighs> See. I would have been willing to give him the benefit of the doubt if not for the fact that so many people in the past have basically called him gay. King Yella had a video saying that King Lil J tried to kiss him off an E pill. Ain't they from the same side too? And that's even the weirder part. But I guess you know you're not gonna make out with the ops, right? So you're gonna make out with your own. I don't know though. This is getting crazy <laughs> as fuck. But that, that Lil J shit, that's his own situation. I don't got nothing to do with that situation. I mean, I've seen it because I've been in prison. Mm. But yeah, if he was doing something with a punk. The COs can definitely write that shit up. That is fucking crazy. Yeah, and I mean, that right there, that video clip is just the kind of thing that we know goes on behind bars, but for somebody like me, I don't I don't know exactly what it would look like to have a punk while you're behind bars. And you see in the video, and it, like, that's got to be a first in hip-hop history. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Unless see? you've been to prison, you're not seeing shit like that. Yo, that is fucking mind-blowing. All right, but do you think... Was what King Vaughn did in the clip that came out of him yesterday, was that dishonorable for him to basically say that he was gay so that they're, they're saying that he was going to go into the op it's dorm only, otherwise? How do we know that? It could have been a lame-ass dorm. Like, all right, when I was in county jail, bro, if you go into a certain dorm and there's no money, nobody's gambling, everybody's a bum in here, you'll have people check in immediately. Mm. I'm scared for my life. Why? I don't know. People want to kill me. And they'll move you in a different dorm. Now you go in a different dorm, there's money over here. Mm. People are gambling, they got drugs, you're hanging out. So it could have just simply been a situation like that because he was already in the dorm. So if it was an op situation, why didn't they strike him? But then he's, he's looking over and saying, like, hi, little Johnny or whatever. Like yeah, he's, I mean, that, he, he that clearly knows some That of doesn't them. look good, but he's most likely trolling. Yeah, the he was fact trolling, yeah. I'm sure that if he knew that that video was going to come out, he would have went about it a different way. Right. You know what I mean? So he did the gay shit. Maybe that was the only way he was able to get out because the CEO's because, I mean, I've been in some spots, bro, where you're like, I'm in fear for my life. They're like, why? You're not bleeding. Right. You ain't get stabbed. You're not scared. Go back to your bunk. And the CEOs will fuck you up if you keep pressing them saying you want to check PC. Right. So if the gay shit was the only way he could get out of his situation, that's what he did. But generally speaking, does a gangster who's behind bars, does he have to, like, if they're about to check you into the op dorm, do you just have to go with it? And, like, like would it be more honorable for him to have just been like, all right, fuck it, I'm spending time with these guys. I don't have to run it mad fades on, or whatever. It depends on where you're at. Well, I mean, bro, where I was at, there weren't fades. Right. It's going straight to metal. So if you're getting mm. put in the op dorm, you don't have anything on you. You know what I mean? So 
what are you going to do? Yeah, like in that situation, me looking at it logically, yeah, I would they, say they, I was gay gonna, before I gonna, got stabbed. The yeah. thing is, your people are going to say you're smart. They're going to say you're pussy. Right. Who do you really give a fuck about? You know what I mean? So it's like, you're going to do what you're going to do. I got put into an op dorm. I didn't even know it was an op dorm. And then I found out when I got in there, my bunkie was a zoo in prison, and he was going home that night. So they put me in the cell. Oh, what you? I'm blood. Oh, I'm zoo. So I'm like, ah, fuck. Now I know I'm in the Zo house. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, the Zoes came to his door. They pressing me. Oh, we got a blood in here. Like, they yelling this shit out because there's no CO in here. So I know when the door pops, it's on. You feel me? And the Zoes at the door were like, yo, shoot us everything. Talking to my bunkie. He's going home. This man pulls out, like, three locks, pokers, razors, and he's sliding it all into the door to them. He was like that hold down man. Mm. You know what I mean? But you got all this metal in here. I don't got nothing. And he just shot it all under the door. So now I know all of them got that shit. You know, so there's situations you just can't avoid. But generally speaking, nah, you're not supposed to just... That's called checking in. What happened in that situation, though? You ended oh, I up got having... moved out. I was never oh. supposed to get put in there. Okay. It was a 21 and up dorm. I was right. 19. I think the most important thing is that nobody seems like they actually think that King Bond is gay. Or was gay. No. But Lil J, it's still up in the air. Well, that's the thing is you can show Boston Richie... For 48 minutes and people are gonna say oh i don't think he told right so it's like i don't know what kind of video they need to see of Lil j but people gonna have their opinion i mean he said it's not me different hair different tattoos different yada 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 which to be fair it is filmed pretty far away but well chicago reds posted the disciplinary report uh, that the situation came from well that seems pretty damning so too no yeah arguing wow yeah it happened that's crazy. So I wonder if he's going to have to fess up to it. No, he probably would have punk right now. Ain't he locked up? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He probably got two of them shits in his fucking cell. <laughs> it's it's bad when you have, like, multiple people from your side, though, too, because even, like, Famous Dex, he was tweeting it up saying, like, he gay. I bet no one he gay, yada, yada. It's like, okay, at a certain point, we got to probably take somebody's word for it, right? Yeah. And, I mean, that's the thing, though, is a lot of people don't say anything until it comes out. So it's like you knew the whole time behind the scenes. Not saying Dex or whatever. But right. There's a lot of situations like that, too, especially with the rats. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, we all knew he snitched. But y'all was with him two months ago. Right. So, okay, yeah, let's let's dig into the Boston Richie one and just get that one out of the way. Let's do it. So how did you even begin to, like, think about investigating this? And, how like, just give us an overview of it, I guess. Kodak Black's artist posted some shit saying Boston Richie was snitching. I forget if it was just, I forget if it was, like, a piece of paper or what exactly it was, but I reposted it. Like, y'all know I'm finna look into this. And then Boston Richie hit me up. Mm. So he DM'd me. He was like, yeah, look it up, this and that, da-da-da. I found some shit, and I hit him back. Like, what is this? Right. And then, you know, he had his version of events. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking to his brother, his cousin, manager, whoever the fuck it is. And then, um, all right, we're going to put it out. <laughs> so the paperwork came out, then the video came out. Right. And so how long do you have to wait for the video? I forget. Be like a week, two weeks. It's pretty wild when like Boston Richie, who's like a very poppin' rapper at the time with Future and all that, where he is is eager to tap in with you and to have the conversation about, you know, the shit before anything even really comes out. Yeah, but there's a lot of rappers that do that. I talked to Finesse two times on the phone weeks before that shit came out. Okay. Yeah. You know what he told me? My people gonna rock with me right or wrong. Mm. All right. He didn't want to talk about because I talked like, look, somebody in your city says he knows you. Says you're trying to pay him off not to expose you. Right. Says he got the paperwork on you. Do you know who this is? Because I'm going to reach out and try to find Maybe he's a rat. I'm going to look into him. Right. And he's like, oh, I don't want to say nothing because, you know, if he trip and fall, they're going to say that I had something to do with it. All right, understandable. But my people going to rock with me right or wrong. Mm, all right. <laughs> yeah, because if, if they say that, that's, it, <laughs> it, it sounds like a distraction. Yeah, it right? shouldn't be a wrong. So it's like. Yeah, because your people have every reason to keep rocking with you regardless of if they you feel like you fucked up or not because you are beneficial to them in their situation in life right now, yeah. right? You got all the money. Yeah. Okay, but just refresh some of the people's memories with the Boston Richie thing. Is basically the footage came out. It's like the cops just really peppering him with a shitload of different questions, just trying to get information about a shooting that involves, what, like a family member of his or something? Yeah, I think his cousin got killed. Right, and so they're just asking him for information. But what leverage did they have that we know of for him to even speak on that? Like, why was he in there offering up information anyway, right? Um, I don't know, because I don't think he was... I don't know if he was there or not. I forget all the details exactly. But right. um, that was just the, the one case, though. 
So there was that case where he was in communication with that, and you know he went to the homicide investigator's office and was giving up all the information and named mad people. He said the names were fake, but then I started looking into his dead cousin, and I said that respectfully. I don't be dissing the dead and all that shit. Right. Um, but the people that he was naming was friends with his dead cousin on Facebook, and he's saying he's giving the police fake names. But then I found another case with a stolen car, and in that situation, he told the police, yeah, my co-defendants knew it was stolen, and they ended up getting arrested. One of the co-defendants reached out to me and was like, yeah, he told on me, but you know how the city go. People ain't going to care, whatever, whatever, whatever. He's DMing me all this shit. And then he goes on Say Cheese and does an interview saying, no, he ain't told. So, mm. You know how that shit goes. Yeah, I mean, the the so you overall think that that justification that Boston Richie had where he was saying that he was just giving them fake names, that Man, was I bullshit? I wouldn't give a fuck what justification he got because he used to be claiming some shit. Now he ain't claiming that shit. Right. And I'm the reason he ain't claiming that shit. Claiming a gang thing? Yeah, it's all in his lyrics. Really? So... Cause it's, what, it, what other fucking justification do we need? If you ain't that no more, that's enough. Because we know that like Future and all them kind of took him off that tour, and we haven't seen them together. I don't know together, what the right? history of that was, because he said he took himself off. Uh -huh. That he needed a mental break or whatever, whatever. That's, that's what he said, apparently. I don't know what the truth is behind that situation. All I know is I don't need any other fucking justification. Right. Because you ain't throwing that shit up anymore. Mm. So if you get dubbed out your set or dubbed out your hood... That's enough to, you know what I mean? And that's the, that's the shit behind the scenes that, you know? But that's how the shit goes. Because he told academics, we know mutual people. We do. And there's a reason it didn't get handled in that mutual way. He never wanted to link me. He never wanted to, he didn't want to go that route. But did you have anybody putting pressure on you to not speak about him in a certain way as a result of no. you knowing people in real life and Fuck shit? No. How? How y'all going to put pressure on me about a rat? <laughs> Fuck that works. Y'all right. rocking up about that? Yeah, that would be a pretty weird thing for them to is, we gonna stand on business. be applying pressure about. It sounds pretty fucking stupid, right? Yeah. They might feel some, maybe they were getting broke off on some bread and they're mad about that. All right, break me off on some bread. Right. Fuck you mean. Wow, that's interesting. So, it's uh, a crazy world. You think he's really down to fuck his cousin? His country ass, probably. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Most likely shit. You wow. ever been to Tallahassee? I, ain't I have, yeah. I ain't dissing Tallahassee, but the only fucking time I've been there was either getting transferred to a prison or going to pick somebody up from a prison. Right. That shit's country. Yeah. As fuck. Right. This is where, like, the Klan is. Like, the KKK, that shit's still out there. Right. You go to North Florida, it's a different world, bro. Isn't Tallahassee where uh, there's, like, hip-hop fish and chips? I don't know. And I think it's, like, DJ Khaled's all, owns all I know it or his uncle owns it. T-Pain. Oh, yeah. Other than that. I just remember going there in my BMX days and having some good times out there. But for, so for the record, 1090 Jake is anti-fucking your cousin? Yeah. I always wonder because I never had a, a cousin who was hot enough to even think about it. Yeah. I think you got enough bullshit on your name to just avoid that whole topic. You think that would make shit worse for me? The blog start going crazy <laughs> talking about, oh, no, he did have a third cousin. He tried to fuck one time. <laughs> That shit's just gonna... My whole thing is, like, if you don't know him when you're little, like, if you know him when you're five, yeah, that's weird. If you just, like, run into him as an adult, I don't know. Like, if, if my cousin just was feeling me, I might to, go for it. Just say you listen to Boston Richie if you're trying to yeah. justify his cousin fucking, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Amazing. Um, so, okay, but with the Boston Richie thing, like, has it been surprising to you to see that people are kind of, like... Still embracing him. It still feels like his fan base is fairly nah, solid, I mean, right? Bro, that's that's the thing. Is like you are gonna have certain people that do, you are gonna have certain people that don't. Mm -hmm. I don't really give a fuck either way. It's not like I'm doing it to end somebody's career. It's like, look, this makes money. Mm -hmm. This makes me money. Right. This is business. Business is booming. So it is what the fuck it is. I don't care if you stop rapping. I'm not listening to that shit. Right. You know what I mean? It fuck. I was listening to him before I found that out. Right. But now it doesn't hit the same. You know, mm. so I'm not telling people you should feel like this or shouldn't feel like this. But then again, it's the influence. Know who you're listening to. Know who you're trying to be like. You know what I mean? Like, they say Future doesn't do drugs. Did you ever hear that? Well, he in an interview said that he doesn't do drugs to the extent that he says that he does drugs in his lyrics, but which to me means will, he's... Motherfuckers will do heavy drugs listening to his music. Myself included. So that's yes. what I mean. Motherfuck not, not motherfuckers will do gangster shit listening to gangster music. Right. And then come to find out the gangster you thought was a gangster is not. Right. So it's just like. Okay. Hypothetically, say that you found 
video footage of King Von snitching. Like, no questions asked. This is terrible. Even, I don't even. I don't even want to do the hypothetical shit. Oh, King oh, Von. <laughs> See, this is the thing, right? I dropped paperwork on SCY Jim. Right. He just got flamed up in Florida, mm -hmm. right? If he had died, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't drop the paperwork. Really? Okay. We don't have to make it about King Von, but just in general, the dead. Would you expose paperwork on somebody who is dead, knowing like if if it's the right thing to nah, do and it's going to make I mean, money? It has nothing to do with the right thing to do because they're already gone. Yeah. At that point, you you're just fucking up someone's legacy. Someone's, you know what I'm saying? Like they tried to draw up paperwork on Young Pappy, uh -huh. Chicago rapper. It's one of my favorite Chicago rappers. Right. He been dead for like four or five fucking years. You know what, I mean? what difference does it make now? Right. You know, because it's not like he's actively. Well, I don't know. Maybe he still has an influence over people, but. For me personally, if they're dead, I don't even see the point. Right. It's just like at that point, I kind of feel like it's like more malicious, if anything. Like you're just trying to shit on somebody and, you know, because they tried to shit on Tupac and say he wasn't a real gangster. Right. He was an actor. He was this. He was a model. He was this. He was that. But then you just sound like a hater. But it is weird with Tupac because if Tupac lived in our modern age, it would pretty much be like open and shut that you are not a gangster in the way yeah, that you how, sometimes though, were portraying, I've met right? Kids from some of the worst blocks in Florida to go to prison and they're pussy. And I've met kids that have come from the suburbs, never been introduced to a violent environment, and they thrive in it. Mm. So you don't know at any point in time somebody, like let's say you get drunk, you crash into a car, you kill somebody, you get 10 years, and you turn into a super savage in prison. Might have to. How are they going to say you're not a gangster? You've been down 10 years fucking shit up. Right. You know what I mean? So... Your life can change at any point in time. Just like you got a lot of gangster rappers that turn into family men. It's right. the opposite effect. You can go one way or the other. Yeah. Oh, but like with the like with the Tupac thing, the I think like there's a lot of damning stuff. Like he went to art school or like what was it, dance school? Like he was a backup dancer in the digital underground when they were like touring and stuff. Like there's just a lot of things. Like, even if I did go to prison and become a super savage after ten years, it's like still if I say some gangster shit, people are gonna say, You're from New Hampshire or you were a BMX rider or you you know, whatever. Like they, they would have you know, a whole you know, host you know, of ammunition there. You know, dancers are some of the best fighters. Right. Like I remember when I was in high school, we had a male cheerleader. And somebody tried him, and he beat the fuck out of him. Really? Because he can do backflips, kickflips, all types of shit. And he can fight. Like Chris Brown. Yeah. I guarantee you he'll beat the dog shit out of somebody. Right. All that dancing and shit, yeah. You respect Chris Brown as a blood? I don't know nothing about that situation. <laughs> I'm sure you can find out. I mean, I don't know nothing <laughs> about that, like, at all. Right. And I'm not going to fucking ask whack about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know? But, okay, do, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about the, the Boston Richie thing, though, is that, okay, his brother was the one who really, like, tried to re-engage the conversation about you and the paintball situation and you allegedly snitching on the people who shot, what, like, your grandma's window out? Like, My aunt window. Your aunt's window, yeah. okay. Do you want to, like, explain that situation or explain, like, how that's different than the Boston Richie thing? Well, for one, people are like, why'd you, uh, you didn't have to say anything. Why'd you say anything? You got the right to remain silent. I wasn't being investigated for anything. Mm -hmm. It was never a crime that, you know, they never looked at me like I'm the one that did it. I shot out her fucking window, called her, oh, yeah, someone shot the window out. So she called the police, the police come. I don't know, I seen two people, they ran that way, and that was it. And you know what's crazy about that is they made fake paperwork on that. Mm. And when it came out that that shit was fake, nobody talked about it. See, that's the, that's the thing that I stand on. Is if somebody's paperwork comes back fake, I'm going to correct it. Mm. One of the only people I've done it for is a 100K track. Because right. there really ain't too many situations where I'm wrong. So in that situation, when you ended up taking down the video about track or whatever, that was what the problem was? I don't, I don't think I took it down. We did an interview, though. Right, we corrected right, right. it. That was the thing, is I corrected the situation. I've stood on that uh -huh. with a lot of these rappers. Yo, if it's fake, you can show me it's fake, I'll take it down. Right. I'll make a video on how I fucked up because I'm not trying to put fake shit on somebody, which is what they did to me. Right. People were so thirsty to try to find something on me that when that hit, it hit. You know what I mean? But then someone actually called the fucking police department and the police literally told them that document doesn't exist because they made some shit saying two people got arrested. They never existed. There was never any two people. Right. So when they try to throw that out there, Boston Richie also tried to say an interview that I gave with the news got people in prison right. locked up. I did an interview with the news speaking on 
how it was in the because I had people in prison sending me videos, yo, show them this, show them this. People ODing, fucking all this crazy shit, got mad drugs, mad phones, whatever, whatever. But these are the dudes with all the shit sending it to me. Mm -hmm. like, yo, yeah, put this out there. Show them how it is in here. These people are dying, nobody sees it. Right, because when you... So when I, when I did that, right. no one had a problem with it. Two years later, now everybody got a problem with it. Right. See what I'm saying? But there's two... the narrative getting spun. Boston Richie tried to say when it happened... They raided prisons and people got right. arrested and said they could Listen, anytime something happens like that, Florida, like I said, it's public. You go on the FLDOC site, that's the Department of Corrections, it tells you every single CO that gets arrested for something. Mm -hmm. It tells you when there's big raids. It tells you when there's major events. I was out of prison already for five years when I gave that interview. Oh, five them, years? Them wow. videos came from like seven, eight, nine, ten different compounds. You think they're going to raid the whole fucking Florida Department of Corrections? You know what I'm saying? So it's right. just like... He was capping in a lot of the shit that he was saying. And then he said to academics that he wanted to fight. And mm. I was just like, I really know you cap now. Because <laughs> I know who the fuck you were trying to be next to. You know what I mean? So if you wanted to set that situation up, all that could have happened. But he never wanted to go that route. Bro, I had a Latin king from New York that's a producer hit me up saying, yeah, you know, you didn't read my message on time. But his brother was more or less trying to finance a situation for you to just leave it alone. Like, come on, bro. So he wanted to physically fight you. That's what he told academics. He ain't never tell anybody else that. Does that make you feel as if... I'll beat the dog <laughs> shit out of Boston Richie. But would you... <laughs> the would, fuck? Are, is 1090 Jake above a fade at this point in life? Like, meeting up with someone to fight that you have an issue with or has an issue with you? No, I don't think anybody's above that. Right. But, I mean, there's going to be stipulations. If you already a rat, then ain't nobody respecting. Like, what am I getting a bag off of that shit? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because that's the thing with YouTube now is... Everyone will get paid to fight. Right. So now you can make 100K, 150K, 250K off of a fight instead of just linking up. If it's on some other timing, though, if it's more of a respectable situation, like China Mac and AD, respect the fuck out of that. Mm. It didn't go on the cameras. It didn't. They just handled the situation. That was it. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, that would be a weird way for me to spend, like, a Monday afternoon just going and catching a fade with somebody. I don't think that's the type of lifestyle you live with. Definitely right? not me. Nah. But just in general, well, for I anyone. Mean, hey, you and uh, Jason Love, that might be a pay-per-view event. I asked somebody that I know who's very involved in the YouTuber boxing space. I said, how much do you really think I could get paid to fight him? And they said two hundred grand. And I was like, okay, never mind. Because no, it's just not enough. No. Nah. Like, if we were talking a million plus, it would definitely be a conversation. But I don't think they got that kind of money at this point. Because the shit is all pirated left and right. They're not making that much money off it. I mean. Well, that's the thing. You're on a different caliber, too. Yeah. So yeah. 200K ain't the same for you. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the porn money is just like, oh, so me and Jason Love could just, like, fuck girls on our own and make a lot of money Way off more. OnlyFans and not have to beat each other up. Also, Anyone who's ever seen me standing next to Jason Love, like that, that would be a brief fight. Yeah. Yeah, he's a fucking giant. Oh, he's taller than you? And he was like a Marine, I just found out. God damn. Which is probably not good. I feel like you develop a lot of toughness as a Marine. So that's like a two hundred thousand dollar ass whooping. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Not a good look. I'm not gonna I'm really? not gonna perish Fuck <laughs> for, that. for the back. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. Um, okay, but yeah, so that like when you talk about the video of you exposing what was going on in the jail, it's it's kind of like how you choose to frame it because you could say that you were exposing corruption and the the officers allowing a really like decrepit environment to thrive. Well, that's that's what I did. See, right. there was a full you know the full topic of conversation. I was speaking on how a lot of the uh, overdose deaths are just being reported as accidental, mm. so people don't actually know how many people are actually overdosing inside of the prison system. And then Florida's corrupt as fuck. But he tried to twist it in whatever way he could. And that didn't take away from the fact that you got a 48-minute fucking video sitting inside of a homicide investigator's office. You're not charged with homicide. Mm. You're not facing homicide charges. You're just there voluntarily talking. Right. How the fuck is that the same? Yeah. You've given names up. You said the names were fake. Proved the names weren't fake. And then you told in another case. And then you told everybody you're trying to fuck your cousin. <laughs> So it's like, I mean, he was saying he was down to fuck his cousins, so we man, don't really I ain't know. Gonna if he lie. Did That's it, right? the sorriest double XL <laughs> freshman list. Fucking, I fuck with Lil Tyler. Yeah, the rest of them. I do feel like this year's came and went with the least uh, publicity of any year ever. 
I couldn't even name you all of the well, people yeah, on it right I now. Well, yeah, because I mean, when I said I got paperwork on three of them, that shit went crazy. Oh, Rob Four Nine, I like his shit. He's too. good, yeah. Yeah, he actually hit me up because I think Flacco said I got paperwork on him. Is that true? No, I don't know why the fuck Flacco Where'd said Flacco that. Where Flacco get that? Tight ass pants cutting off the circulation. He can't think right. <sighs> Flacco has issues with the truth sometimes. I think he said that shit sometimes. to Wack One Hundred. Really? Yeah. So Rob Four Nine hit me. I'm like, nah, that's a dub. Okay, so since you mentioned him, what is the like? What what spurred? When did you first find out that Wack One Hundred had any kind of issue with you? I don't really remember, bro, because after I did the first interview with you, he followed me on Instagram, mm. and he still follows me to this day. Right. Um, I think it was the 6 9 shit. Okay. I did a video on 6 9 I think that was the first time he said something about me. Right. And then it just propelled from there. It's weird because you guys are supposed to be on the same team, where you're both people who are... Well, not necessarily. Well, not like that team, but like the, uh, you know, wanting to... Like, he's he's against snitching. He's clearly involved in exposing people for this type of stuff on Clubhouse. He takes a pretty hard stance on it. You're in the same boat. But then, I mean, you do see Wack giving out passes to all kinds of people that you've reported on because he has yeah. connections with him in the industry and shit. That, and then I see him make accusations against people where there's no proof, like 21 Savage. Right. And I think he said something about Pooh Shiesty. Yeah. So it's like, I don't do that either. His logic on 21 Savage is just like, oh, because you are an immigrant who came from the UK at some point, that means that you're required to speak, to, to be honest with the cops about everything that you've ever been involved in. It seems like a stretch to me. Well, I mean, I think the gist of it was the type of visa that he needed, it was something to do with being a victim in a crime. Right. And 21 Savage was shot when he was like 21 years old and his friend got killed. Mm. Um... As far as what he needed to do to obtain that, it could have been cooperating in the sense of, yeah, I got shot. I seen a black eye. I don't know which direction it went. You could have gave any story, a fake story, whatever. Mm. But the thing is, how would that look for 21 Savage? Like, you're putting him in a weird situation. Right. You're accusing him of being a rat on shit that you've never even seen. But if he comes out and defends his name and says, I lied to the police, now what happens if they take his visa? Mm. You're putting him in a, in a defenseless situation. So it's like, why even accuse somebody if you don't have the paperwork behind it? Right. That's how I look at it. You know what I mean? That's why when I, we spoke on it when I did the interview from Boston. Right. You was asking me about that. I'm like, no, I'm not going for it. It's just like, I don't do that. And I actually thought Wack was smarter than he is. I thought he was the one getting shit. He's not. Shout out to Mickey Truth. She's actually the one that gets his paperwork. He relies on other people in his clubhouse world, right? He relies on her right? specifically. Yeah. Okay. And I'm cool with her. You know what I mean? We've gone back and forth about cases. She's actually covered my case uh -huh. and told him, nah, Jake ain't a snitch. Uh, why are you defending him? You know what I mean? So it's like, it's the personal shit because she also stamped QCP snitched. Right. And that's Wax Man's. Mm. So shout out to Mickey Truth because she keeps it 100. Right. But so with the Wax thing, like, what's his reasoning for like really having issues with you besides just. Man, I don't give a fuck, bro. <laughs> I don't care about that. Just the fact that he's. he's... He just wants to. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't really get it. Because, like, I mean, shit really be affecting people's careers. Yeah. You know, so it's like when the QC shit came out, I guess he wanted to show that he's defending dude or whatever. Uh -huh. And um, 6 9 that's his artist. So he's going to defend 6 9 I really just don't give a fuck because I ain't going to lie, nobody on the East really likes him anyways. Whack? Yeah. People got issues with him out there? Well, it's really just from the 6 9 shit. Like, how are you going to pick up the biggest rat from the East Coast and... You know, take them up under your wing. But That's I, like if somebody snitched on the West Coast, mm -hmm. top snitch, and then somebody from New York signs them. Right. I said, what the fuck are you doing? But Wack is the same dude who's on, like, YG's ass because he, I don't know, allegedly, like, isn't from where he says he's from or he he's had a weird history in the See, streets or know, whatever. I don't, I don't know the whole L.A. thing. I know that everyone that I've talked to from out here, none of them have ever said Wack's a real one. None of them have ever stamped him and been like, yeah, that's you should fuck with him. No one's ever said that to me. So maybe I just don't know the right people, but from multiple organizations, not just Blood, Pyru, et cetera, like all around the board, nobody's ever been like, yeah, that's the dude. Mm. So Interesting. I mean, Wack definitely comes in here with some real ones. He definitely seems like he demands respect from a significant percentage of people. But there's also a lot of people who I've heard and over listen, the years maybe, say maybe, that they don't fuck with him at all. Maybe we're getting off on the wrong foot. Maybe we just need to have a sit down and maybe we can come to a conclusion because me and him have never met. We really don't know each other. Right. So maybe if we had a personal understanding, it might be a different situation. Yeah. You know, there might be a mutual respect 
or somebody might get dead like Kelpie, but <laughs> either fucking way. Yeah, I have a ton know. of respect for Wag, but at the same time, I mean, it's pretty obvious to me that he kind of picks and chooses who he's going to yeah, go hard you, on. You got you to gotta stay relevant. So if he feels like what he's doing is keeping him relevant, and it definitely is, you right. do what you're doing. Yeah, and, and you know what's interesting about the 6ix9ine thing with him is that he at first was saying that he was 6ix9ine's manager. Then at a certain point, like I, I said that the other day, I'm like, aren't you his manager? And he said, no, we work together. Or that's my homie or some shit. So I don't know exactly what changed there, but he's, he's still got a relationship with him. He was just with him in Miami like the other day, and he FaceTimed me with 6ix9ine. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this conversation going to be like? And 6ix9ine just goes, hey, yo, Adam. Who's the biggest rapper you had on your show in the last three, four years? And like he, he asked me like three times, kind of like put me on the spot to answer. I'm like, probably Vaughn. And he goes, yeah, well, rah, rah, rah. And then he just starts talking about how he's number one on the Latin charts or some shit. And I, I really didn't know what to say because I'm like, I don't pay attention to that. I don't know about Latin music. It's you know, great you know, if you're doing well nine, in that world. I think 6 9 reposted me when the Boston Richie shit happened. Really? Yeah. And then academics, I was on a, uh, it was me. Academics, somebody else, and Six Nine on the Discord. I never spoke to him though, uh -huh. but we were all in the same like call, I guess. Mm -hmm. But he was basically saying like, "Yeah, if Ten Ninety J says you a rat, you a rat," and he's like, "He's up there. He's the fucking top." Yeah, you know? he stamps it. That's a big because a lot of the stuff we're talking about with like Gunna, I mean, well, this is the it's, thing. It's about, not really this the, is same. the thing about Gunna, bro. If Gunna's a rat, everyone else is a rat. Mm. And nobody likes to say that because everybody took the same plea. Right. He's just the one that He's was famous, on video. Yeah. So it's like, if they didn't rat, he didn't rat. If right. he ratted, they all ratted. You can't just be biased in the situation. So is it weird for you to see Gunna coming out and like his album seems like it was pretty well received? You did have a lot of the big rappers kind of shitting on him for it and everything, but it sold pretty well. It sold just as well as the Thug album. A lot of people said it's better than the Thug album. Uh does that like hurt you in your heart a little bit the, to see Gunna like apparently? It seems like he's gonna make it through this. I don't really care to be honest. Yeah. I don't. I don't really. It doesn't affect me. Do you believe that he got tricked into making that statement, or do you think that he knew what he was getting nah, into? Nah, you don't get tricked. You know what the fuck you're saying. It's not like he's fucking 15. You know what I'm saying? You're literally a grown man. You know what you gotta say. You know when your heart doesn't sound right when it comes out of your mouth. You're saying that, yeah. YSL is a gang. Yeah, I have knowledge of them committing crimes. But every one of them said that. Right. Young Thug's own brother took the same plea. Un Unfunk? Yeah. Yeah. Why isn't he a rat? Right. So it's like, it's picking and choosing. I mean, he is, right? Or at least like based on what we've seen. If Gun is, then they all are. Right. Thug's the only one that can't snitch on his fucking self, so... Do you think there's a chance that Thug gets out and kind of disowns everybody that took a plea, or...? Or, or is that just going to be too detrimental to his social circle? I don't, I don't, even, I don't circle. even want to give my opinion on what I think is going to happen. I don't think it's going to be anything good because it seems like he's the top person that they want to set mm. an example with. So I think that right there is going to go left. So you think he's the one who's likely to get smacked over They're the head with a long ass sentence? They're going to the worst punishment, yeah. Yeah. It's wild that we have to wait this fucking long for it, and the trial seems like it's never going to happen. Melly shit's about to finish, and that's going to be fucking crazy. Okay, so based on what you've seen, how do you think that's going to turn out? I don't know. I don't know. That shit's hectic. I feel like Melly's going to beat it. Really? Um, I don't know if that means Portland will too, though. Mm. Because it's like, if they can't prove Melly killed anyone, Melly's off, but Portland was still riding around with two bodies. So now they have to, because he's not just charged with the murder, he's charged with accessory. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't know. That shit's, that shit's crazy. I think Melly got a good chance, though. Yeah, I mean, everybody from his camp has always been weirdly positive about it, like Track and, and Drew and shit. They've no, overly, always... Overly positive. Yes. I've spoken to all of them behind the scenes. Not right. Melly, obviously, but I've spoken to Track and all of them, and there's, like, no hesitation with a positive outcome. Right. Like, oh, I know he's good. Which I normally feel like you know, you're used to people acting like their homie's going to get out of well, jail this, and this beat is, it, right? This is the thing. is I knew that there was a lot of bullshit in his case when I got brought up. Because mm. I'm involved in the Melly case. Right. What did they say about you? The undercover detective who testified with the mask on said, I'm one of the most highest and respected members of G-Shine. 
the same gang that Melly is allegedly a part of. Uh -huh. Mind you, I don't know Melly. Right. Nobody I know knows Melly. So that right there doesn't make any sense. This gang detective said he got this information from a confidential source in Broward County, which makes me think of Pino. Because mm. who else would say some fucking retarded shit like that? Wow. But he's making it seem like he's the fucking the gang guy, right? So I would assume he looks the pot, this and that. But nobody knows because he had the mask on. Mm -hmm. And he's acting like he's infiltrating gangs, this and that. Well, I found out what he looks like. Yeah, let's see it. So <laughs> listening to the case, the, Melly's lawyer said... Searching on Cash App brings up a picture of him, his kid, and his wife. Mm -hmm. So when you type in a phone number on Cash App, it'll bring up that person, right? That's one way you can search for people, try to find out who they are. Okay. So which camera you want me to um, go ahead and... These ones pointed at you would probably be right good. Ahead. Yeah, or maybe we well, can... How about this? How about you hold it? Okay. So that way if there's any uh, legal issues, it'll go on you and not me. But... um, This, this nice bearded chap right so here. So this is... Danny Polo, the okay. gang detective investigator that undercover, whatever the fuck, testified in the YNW Melly case. That picture right there was brought up in court, and the lawyer said, is this you? And he said, yeah, is this you with your wife? Yeah. All right, so why do you need a mask on? Because he claims there's a $50,000 hit on his head. First off, how do you put a hit on somebody and you don't know who they are? Mm. They put a hit on, on you, they know who you are. Right. You know what I mean? Second off... How were you this sloppy? Because it wasn't just the Cash App. It was her Gmail account, too, mm. had a picture of them. And then once you figure that out, I mean, you can simply just Google Danny Polo and find out his wife is a real estate agent from Miami. And then you see everyone that lives in the household. You see the ad. All of this is public information. Once again, we're speaking on Florida. So if you're in that fear for your life, why are you so sloppy with everything that's online? Because then once you start showing... And all these pictures, you can see it's clearly him. The eyes, the beard. I yeah. mean, here's another one right here. What, what gang sign is this? Man, I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to be. I, I don't to think memorize he knows. That. He, said cool. he, he said he's a fan of the music. Okay. But, I mean, this is the first undercover gang detective that I've ever looked into and exposed. And it seemed like really his wife exposed him because she's the one that put the pictures out there. Right. So all of these pictures are publicly available, but they hid his face in the trial for whatever reason, because he feels like there's this thing on his head, whatever, whatever, which I don't see true. But at the same time, you decided to put me in the fucking case saying that I'm this and that when that could have an impact on my personal life. So mm -hmm. he wants to hide his face but put it on everyone else and then come to find out there's a uh, what's that shit called when people try to like do the signatures to make something happen? You know what I'm talking about? Signatures? Yeah, when they sign it off on some shit. What's it uh, called? Okay. Basically, he he investigated a case and got a bunch of people hit with a RICO. Okay. And a bunch of people were involved that had nothing to actually do with it. So he got mad people. A petition, I think is the word. Okay. So they have a petition against him for the bullshit that he's done as law enforcement. We're getting people indicted that had nothing to do with shit. There's a lot of stuff on his name. I'm going to come out with a video on him. Really? I was just more so waiting for the... Uh, the trial to be over? Well, the witness aspect of it. You okay. Know? So now that that's done, I'm going to start going on this shit because, you know, you personally involved me, and now you have my undivided attention. So I never heard of the G-Shine Bloods. Is this just total mystery to you, or where, where is he getting that information? It said a confidential source. That could have been a crackhead in Broward County. That could have been Pino. Right. I don't know. You think Pino hates you that much that he would be still presently snitching on you? Yeah, because somebody else that knows him recently got picked up, and they said that they got asked questions that only Pino would know. So there's a lot of weird shit with him. But um, Interesting, because Pino DM'd me today and said, ask Jake why he is scared to rematch me MMA style since he wants to cap and say that we pulled guns on him. When did I say that? I don't like know. When did we fight MMA style? No, first? he says he wants to rematch and he wants it yeah, to be MMA rematch, style. Yeah, but to rematch, that means we've done it before. When did we do that before? Well, we've all seen the video of you guys fighting. Well, because he came out here and said what, though, when you asked him if something was involved? What did he tell you? Did he say that there was a gun involved? I don't know right. what he said. It's been a he while. He said something on your podcast, though. You asked him if there was something involved. I think you said weapons and he gave you an answer. Right. I didn't give you an answer. Okay. So if we didn't do it MMA the first time, why would we do it now? But second off... 
you broke as a bitch right now, working with the Salvation Army, not making nothing, struggling, living with your moms again while I'm over here doing what I'm doing. So why would I even give you the clout of doing that? I'm not going to get paid for that. Yeah, it's always weird when somebody wants to arrange like a celebrity boxing match and one person is decidedly not really one a celebrity. <laughs> Not, no offense to Pino or anything, it but add up. you nah, would be elevating your op to a much you different let pedestal, your friend right? Know, yeah. like, homie, chill out. Right. Everyone else's career went up, and you stayed where you at. Yeah. So, you know. What, what do you think? What separates you from all the prison YouTubers who are kind of like from that same time period? Like, what, what do you think it is about you that let you elevate past all that? Well, I mean, there's still a few that's that's going crazy. Christina Randall is a female prison YouTuber from Florida, and she was one of the main people who helped me out behind the scenes. Really? And um, she's up. also one of the ones that told me early on, watch who's trying to benefit from you. Mm. And that, you know, a lot of the stuff that we spoke on really helped me out. But um, I think the biggest thing for me was I kept elevating and adding new things. Because if you stay the same, people are going to get tired of it. Mm. So it was, I didn't want to stick to doing the same shit. I kept adding new things. I saw the genre was dying out early on because mm. now everybody's talking about their story. So I started getting into the rap shit. There's only so much to say about prison. Yeah, I mean, it gets old quick, but the rap shit is really what I feel like kind of kicked my way into the industry because now I'm affiliated with... Like, I, it went from Pino to Boston Richie, mm. Finesse Two Times, fucking Greedo. Right. These names are on a completely different level now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Cause While that, he's still thinking about me, I'm over here doing this. When you when you do prison type stuff, it's like everybody's anonymous in it for the most part. There's just a bunch of random guys. And then you get to the rap stuff and it's like, oh, you got crazy bullshit going on and these people are famous and influential and people yeah. actually really care about it's knowing on a what's different going level. on. Yeah. yeah. This shit I mean, bro, what was that? Like three years ago? Something like that, yeah. Imagine still being the guy that wants to from three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> What I will say about you, too, though, is that you've always taken a quality over quantity approach. A lot of people just hop on live stream and just babble and just yeah. will spend an hour reading random donations and they're just talking. And it's just like it's bad content. It's badly put together. It doesn't show respect for the audience. You have always put out these nice, clean, crisp 10, 15 minute videos that are like they're made for people to to view and to you know appreciate and that goes a long way when so many other people like just don't really have it the intelligence or whatever to make the stuff watchable right nah, i appreciate that yeah i mean I, I try to put an effort into what i do yeah you know and it just so happens that like i accidentally ended up being good at this shit because yeah. i never intended on being a youtuber right so now that i know i'm good at it like not trying to sound cocky but i try to put out the best shit that i can do you have other ideas for content that you'd like to make at some point, yeah, or is it? I don't even want to really do this snitching shit anymore. Honestly, like once I get a million subscribers, I'm really on to some other shit. So I kind of just want to hit that milestone because that's like a a big achievement for me. Mm. Get the gold plaque. I'd be interested in even having my own podcast. Mm. I want to stream live stream. Yeah, because I was just thinking about that with the live stream and stuff. I'm surprised you haven't really taken that leap. Stream is hitting. Yeah. So I want to set that up in the background and get something going with that at the same time. But I just want to keep expanding. Yeah. If I just stay doing the same thing I'm doing, eventually it's going to die out. But if I keep expanding and making it bigger and bigger, hopefully I can have my own No Jumper or Vlad TV. What I will say, though, platform. it can be hard to balance streaming and also making, like, high-quality video content. Like, yeah. you know, if you wake up and you spend 10 hours or 12 hours on a video and then you also want to be the guy who's spending two or three hours on Twitch just talking. Well, and, this is the thing. Like, know, I'm a gamer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can fucking stream that. What else you play? What do you play? You know play? what I mean? Everything with a gun. Oh, really? <laughs> Everything. With, I don't play none of the sports shit. It's got a gun in it. I'm on it. Really? So even with that, I'll be playing with people online. They're like, you're not the real 1090 Jake. Mm. Da, 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 what the fuck are you doing playing this shit? I'm like, bro, this, yeah. This it's is hard me. to I fake that shit. voice. And then people want to, you know what I mean? Like, yo, bro, why don't you start streaming this shit? This shit will go crazy. Right. And it's just, like, I'll put a clip up on my fucking Instagram. Everyone's hitting me up. Yo, let's do this, let's do this. So, so I just want to get into different aspects. I want to vlog, travel vlogs, all that. Right. Because this whole street shit, snitching shit, is really kind of fucking annoying. Yeah. It's it's weird, too, though, because, like, you know, YouTube always has just these different waves of shit happening. And, like, a couple years ago, it's like, 
the gang content just became so much more popular and you had channels start blowing up like swamp stories whatever and there, there's still an appetite for that stuff but it's maybe not quite what it was so it's sort of like providing like an overview of like different things that have gone on, on the streets well that's the thing bro is i was covering a lot of deaths a lot of murder cases right. and that shit gets exhausting when all you're thinking about is who got smacked today like mm. And that shit, what the fuck? I, I like the snitching's a little more positive. No one's dead. You right. know what I mean? Versus just having to fucking graphically describe someone's death and read the report and, yeah, the bullet entered here and exited here and the splatter and the police found it and fucking... It's not that good for your mental to just nonstop talk about that shit, you know? Yeah. The other day I tried to find a video. I, I forget why, but I was trying to, like, find some video about some gang beef and it was something like the neighborhood versus the Hoover thing. And so I typed into YouTube, like, neighborhood rolling 60s versus Hoovers. And I found, like, a hundred videos that are about the history of this rivalry. And I'm like, this has got to be, like, one of the most well-worn niches in, in you know, YouTube. Like, to just talk about this beef. And it's like, there's probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of murders that you could talk about in regards to that. Not to mention fights and Bro, all just, kinds of situations. Just the Chicago Oh, scene, my God, yes. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. And that's, that's why I feel like a lot of rappers want to... A lot of people have that get rich or die trying mentality. So it's like, why do you want to rap about killing and you know the risk that comes with it? It's like, well, because look, everyone's blowing up. Yeah. You know, if I catch a body and beat the body, I'm going to be in the next Trap Geek video with mm -hmm. Trap or Ross. And I'm going to be fucking, you know, going crazy. How do you feel about Trap or Ross? I fought with him. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. Heavy. I seen I like Sharp him. trashing him the other day. I was kind of surprised. I don't, I don't know nothing about that situation. Um, a lot of people feel a certain type of way. I feel like if there was YouTube awards, he definitely deserves one. Right. For the way the King Vaughn documentary came out, a lot of people just bullshit themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you talked about killing multiple people, you're tied into multiple murders, you're every bit of a fucking killer, beat a body, this and that. You, you, the biggest thing about your image was the fact that you were killing people. And then someone else is going to be like, no, he wasn't a killer. He was a good kid. Mm. When? <laughs> when the fuck did he ever talk about playing football? Right. You know what I mean? Like, that was his image. Yeah. So to say it wasn't is a discredit to everything he lived and died for. That's mm -hmm. what he wanted to be, a fucking demon. Yeah. That's what he was. That's why people like him. Vaughn tweeted about that shit so much that the idea that there's anything wrong with people then taking those tweets and taking the lyrics and then making content Bro, out this, of it it's like the, of course someone thing, was right? going to do that rappers call other rappers pussy that have security right, right. because they want the opportunity to get to you mm. so when they criticize trap Lil ross you're white you're from the uk you've never been over here all right well if he was black from over here in the hood he would already got killed for doing what he's doing mm. so what do you want him to do die i don't understand like you're saying he's doing it from a safe yeah, that's why he is who he is. He's safely covering this shit and putting it together beautifully mm -hmm. for everybody to fucking watch. But we've seen what happens to Zach TV. Mm -hmm. You know, we see how these certain situations play out. People want you to be accessible so they can get rid of you. And if they can't get access to you, they're going to criticize you for that fact. But that's one thing that kind of shocks me is that, so for people like me and academics, we are kind of like early on reporting on shit that was going on in the street and everything. And the criticism was always, you guys are outsiders. You're not really from Chicago. You're not really from these places. So therefore, right. you have an opinion about it or reporting on it is kind of disingenuous. It's gross, well, whatever. You see, you see now with academics, he doesn't stamp anything. Mm. He's like the mediator which I'm sure he learned that from the Warren Chirac. The Warren Chirac, he's giving people crazy-ass nicknames and stamping them as the Grim Reaper and this and that. So kind of like the situation that I'm in right now where I'm stamping who's ratting. You know what I mean? It, it puts yourself in a position, mm -hmm. and you become the bad guy. You become the villain in the genre. Oh, he's the one saying this and saying this and saying that. So with academics now, academics doesn't call anyone a rat. Mm. He's, what do y'all think? He'll show you everything. And then he'll say, what do y'all think? So that way it doesn't blow back on him. Mm. He's just reacting to it. Versus if he was stamping it how I'm stamping it, he'd get the same reaction. Right. You know what I mean? But that's just most likely he learned that from the blowback he got 
from the war in Chirac. Yeah. And, and the war in Chirac, though, he was being a little too lighthearted about a lot of that stuff. You know, he was just having fun with it and not acting like it was these yeah, were real people, people or real consequences, you know? I mean, I was watching that shit, though. <laughs> yeah, me too. So, but when I, I've, like, seen small clips of it in recent memory, and it's like, oh, yeah, that is kind of fucked up. Like, no, I used, to, <laughs> I used to always think that in the back of my head, too, though. Like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like... I don't know. Because if you're anonymous, you can say whatever the fuck you want, you know? Yeah, like, well, that's the thing about the kid that tried to say that I was a snitch is he's anonymous. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason he's still anonymous. Right. And then the fact that he made a video saying I'm this and I'm that, and then he deleted it, but let everyone else run off with the, the narrative. Right. Just speaks for itself. But, okay, even just Chicago, like, me and Ag would get that criticism. You guys are not from here. Now in Chicago, the two most popping interviewers are... DJU and 16 shot him is pretty reasonable to say. They're both very much like from that place, that culture, more than me or Ak. And so as a result, they ask questions in interviews that offer like a knowledge of what's going on in the streets that's way deeper than me or Ak would necessarily know. And I'm like, okay, so these are two guys who are from this place and they end up doing an even more extreme version of the shit that me or Ag were doing because they really are from there and they're driven by the same incentives that we are. They're just closer to the ground level so they're able to know more shit. So the same thing that I get shit for and people say I'm an outsider or whatever, it's like when you when you offer up these same incentives to people who are actually from there, they're going to end up doing an even more extreme portrayal of that culture, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of referees don't play the sport. Yeah. So it's like... You know, they know everything about it. They know how to make calls on situations. But we don't rap. It. We don't rap. <laughs> you know, in a different world, if people were a little bit dumber, they would say, like, how dare Adam and Jake have opinions on this shit when they don't even rap? Yeah, well, because we're white. But I used to get that that's, shit. That's really the well, problem. Well, that didn't stop Millie's. Not Millie's got <laughs> criticism, too. The fuck? True, true. He got criticism the same way anyone else does. Yeah. Especially when me and him linked up. Oh, yeah? You know what I mean? But shout out to Bro, because he got real ones standing behind him. Mm. That's you know good. what I'm saying? He get love where he's from. He shows love back to where he's from. Mm. I don't know if you're interested, but I know he's doing a sneaker give back. I think it's at the end of the month. Really? Um, if you want to get in contact with him about that, they're giving away sneakers to the kids in the hood. But he really be tapped in where he's at. Mm. And he really got love where he's at. And then you got bum-ass Boston rappers that are 30, 40 years old, never done shit with their career. And, oh, fuck him. He's white. He's, he's got okay. haters out there now? Yeah, everybody mm. does, though. Yeah. You're not going to find success without that. Yeah. So it's like... If you're not bringing people up with you, or like, you know, you're bringing your people up, but if there's yeah, always going to be salty-ass people. You don't even got to bring people up. People just ain't going to like you because they don't got the motion that you got. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it's a part of it, bro. Yeah, definitely. I'm used to it. All I know is I don't ever have no negative interactions in person. Right. Matter of fact, yesterday, when I fucking caught these sneakers in the mall in Cambridge, where he's from, I ran into a BPS homie in a Paru. Okay. Inside of the fucking uh, little hat store or whatever. Uh -huh. Walked up, what's up? Oh, yeah, duh, 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 BPA, he from out here. Like, his hood from out here. You know what I mean? Mad love. First quarter. Take pictures, all that. Right. I don't have negative interactions in person. It's always love. 99% of the people that come up to me are black. Yeah. But you look at the internet, you would get a different perspective. Oh, yeah. So. And that's a weird thing. Like, the first time you get canceled or the first time you have, like, a hate mob on you, you think that you're going to go to the grocery store and everybody's going to be mad at you. And then you realize, like, oh, wait. I might have read a thousand comments about me today, but this shit doesn't usually turn into real life energy. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I can say is like, I know I've done videos on people. So I'll have people come up to me and be like, oh yeah, you did a video on my friend, da da da. I'm like, all right, what that mean? <laughs> was it a good one or a bad one? Like, yeah. I don't know. It's like, no, 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 it's cool, it's cool. I just, I don't know the intention behind saying something like that. Right. But I've never had a negative interaction. Mm. When we did the live show, you were fully out there embracing everybody, having conversations with everybody, but it did stand out that, like, this was the first time that you had really put yourself in front of that many fans of you, but also in your city. Yeah. How's that memory stand out to you? That's just raw. That was sick? Yeah. I still got uh, the T-shirt. Oh, yeah? From the show and the rapper and everything. Hell, yeah. Yeah, I be keeping, like, little memorable things, you know what I'm saying? But that shit was crazy. That was the first time I was on stage. The second time I was on stage was at Millie's show. Mm. He so, just brought you out as like a special guest and shit? Yeah. That's sick. Fucking backstage, met Paul Wall, met a couple of other people, and then fucking brought me out on the stage, shouted me out. All that shit, bro. This shit, love for real. Like, yeah. That shit was dope. I ain't never did nothing like that. And I keep like a little memorable thing from like each 
Like I still got the uh, the backstage pass from the Millie's concert. Right. But I fuck with bro. So what's like? But that is the weird thing too is that if there was somebody who was burnt out enough that they would want to do something physical to you as a result of shit that you said online, I mean, they're gonna get pop, shot, stabbed, <laughs> all type of shit. Cause I keep my city. You see how I've I seen it? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I my situation it. is always under control. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I hope nobody tries to do some dumb shit because I keep my situation under control. But I was to say. The types of people who would do something like that are realistically probably not the types of people that are going to go to a live podcast on like nah, a I Thursday feel like, night I feel or whatever. Like it would be somebody that would like come up with a camera or something. Oh, that that's definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it would really be on some like street shit like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worry about that sometimes. Knock on wood, but everywhere I move, I always make sure shit's situated. Definitely. So, has, has you re re exposing so many people and revealing all uh, all these snitches? Is that something that makes you want to move even a little bit more careful? I mean, you're kind of like off tucked away in Boston, so it's like you're not reporting on people from Boston almost ever. But does that... Well, the thing about Boston and New York is you really can't get paperwork. Like, really? Yeah. The Commonwealth states, you really don't get shit. Oh, Virginia is okay. another one. So it's not that I avoid Boston. It's just that I'm not really able to get the shit. Right. Um, But as far as being tucked away, I mean, I'm still... Florida, New York. Right. You know, so it's like, I be out there, but I don't put myself in certain situations. I don't go looking for shit. Like, the whole reason I never wanted to be a rapper is because I didn't want all the beef that comes with it, but I found myself in the same situation anyway, so I don't know, maybe I just need to drop some songs or something. Well, I think about it sometimes, too, because I got all these people around me that can rap real good, and sometimes I think, like, why don't I just get them to help me out, write a song, say a bunch of crazy ass shit. I got all kinds of stuff in my head. I feel like I could get like a skeleton of a verse from them and then just change the Bro, shit and make it exactly what I'm saying. Imagine if I made a diss song on everybody that ratted, yeah. that I exposed. This shit gonna go crazy. Yeah. It's just, it's gonna come with what it comes with, but you know. I'll probably get hooked on it crazy because I know the music earns a lot of money too and you could really work on that back catalog. Stop performing. I don't know if I have the voice for it. Try it out. I apparently, I have the voice for this, but I don't know if that would translate to like something people would really want to listen to. Y'all got a to. fucking studio. I've seen it. We do. Yeah. Very few people going. have recorded music in there, though. Get that shit going. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it, but oh man, sometimes I'm just like, I, I remember when I first started doing hip hop shit, like content wise. My mom said to me, she goes, "Adam, you got to promise me that you're not gonna start rapping," and I was like, "Mom, I'm not gonna stop start rapping. What the fuck?" Like I was just laughing at her, and now here I am considering it. And it's like, I always took that as like really good advice from her. But at the same time, I don't know. Sometimes like just doing the craziest thing possible. I've definitely seen that over the last couple of weeks. Like you just do the craziest thing possible and it gets you a shitload of attention. And then that attention usually converts into something positive, even if there's also a lot of criticism that comes with it. Yeah. Clearly I'm referencing well, I mean, a porn star fucking my bitch. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> you crazy for that. I'm not gonna lie. Everybody's been asking me about that shit. Yeah, that's wild. Everyone why, who why, I've why ever you... known in my whole life is basically telling me like, "Yo, people are asking me about you left yeah. and right." Like, what are we supposed to say for you? He's a porn star. That they're not satisfied with that. <laughs> I know. Like, we need some fucking detailed. You know what I mean? Like, that's. Oh, that's some crazy shit, dog. It's weird because people always want to make it like way more interesting. Like it's it's not good enough for it to just be like, oh yeah, like she did a scene with another porn star. It has to be like, well, she's cheating on him. The relationship's gonna fall apart. You know, he's mad. He's mad as fuck. And it's like, no, like it actually was like just a straight business thing, you know. And apparently, she's a very good actress. She was biting the fucking the bed sheet and everything. That's that's crazy. <laughs> I ain't See, he's so respectful that he don't even want to comment on it or act like he's seen the memes. People kill people about shit like that. Yeah. A lot of people kill over women. Mm. So for you to feel that secure in your relationship as a white man, mm. to hand over her to a BBC, mm -hmm. which has been all over, that's some crazy shit. No, yeah, it's definitely some crazy yeah. shit. I don't think I personally could uh, do that. I don't think most people could. Nah, but that's what sets you apart. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be willing. If you really want to go truly viral, you have to be willing to do something that other people are so shocked by they would never even that, consider it. Isn't that what people say that selling your soul, though? See, I never felt like that. She never felt like that. Like, one time, I, a day or two after she did the scene with him, I just called her a cheater. And she just looked at me like it was the most shocking allegation. I was just like, you fucking cheater. 
How do you feel about everybody saying I got next? Um, it's like if you're gonna be a porn star in general, you have to be really willing to like kind of roll with the punches and just yeah. be willing to joke around about it and stuff. Like Antonio Brown today, like because every day that goes by, I think. Oh, the media frenzy is going to slow down at some point. Which nah, the, the nah. tape is out, so that's, that's like she's going crazy. Yeah, well, the tape is out, so that's like the beginning of it becoming less of a thing. And then today, I look at Twitter and I see Antonio Brown say, "Yo, I got next," and he tags me, and I'm like, "Oh, well, okay." Let me ask there you. There it right? is. Do you think that there's a female that you could fuck that would put you on an equal level, where it's like you got get back? I mean, I already fucked so many hot porn stars with her that she already knows about, which is a big part you know, of why I felt all right with it. kind of me up. Like, when I find someone, I'm like, damn, she's bad. Then I find out you fucked her. I'm like, damn. That yeah. Just, that kind of does something. I ain't gonna lie. There was a porn star who I actually think is one of the hottest porn stars, and she, like, this is many years ago, she she had a threesome with me and Lennon, and she was eating my ass, and it was like, we're, Man, we were man. drinking all day. So I, I had, like, terrible midday diarrhea. And then she starts eating my ass, and I told one of my homies, and he actually like said that he has not been able to jerk off to her since. So. Yeah, nah, that would fuck up everything. To me, her being a shit eater is kind of hot. Yeah? I'm not mad at it. She's a little freak. That's why you're Adam 22. Yeah, I got a different disposition. I got you're a different, different level but of but tolerance. I'm, but I'm still you know? rocking with you. I got the, the 22. <laughs> I'm still rocking with you. Was that with intentional you. that you wore that today? You're oh, okay. You're fucking right. This is a mirror. You know how much I spent on it? Like seven something... Just the fuck, yeah. Damn. Out of 22, the palm trees. I've walked by the Amiri section at uh, Saks Fifth a few times. You'll go broke in that bitch. That shit's so fucking expensive. Yeah, I'm, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, a lot of this stuff is a little too loud for me. I don't think I got it in me. Yeah, I be buying that shit, not even asking, and then I fucking go home and cry about it. Really? Yeah, but I like it, though. How much is the most you ever blown on clothes at once? I don't know, to be honest. Yeah. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. When I did the skit pretending to buy her the Lambo truck, I got into it oh, for a second. Oh, you didn't buy that? No, no. But, uh, which is crazy because, like, the New York Post reported on it today. I thought you bought that. Nah, that was a joke. But I was actually at, like, a pretty famous rental car spot in L.A., too. So I was like, this has got to. Oh, you fucking cloud chasing. Yeah, yeah. That was my idea. <laughs> and that was one of the things that went the most viral, viral was yeah. me pretending to buy that shit. But I sat in it for a second, and I was like. I could see myself driving this. This no, thing's kind of hard. I, I didn't do some shit like that before. I got a picture on my uh, Instagram when I got my silver plaque. I bought some silver Jordans, and I got them from some sneaker fucking thing or whatever. And um, when I got them, there was a scuff on one of them. Okay. And I'm like, I'm not paying for this because they were expensive. And the tags were still on them, but they were on one sneaker. So when I took the picture... I took the picture with the sneaker that looked good, mm. that didn't have the tags on it. I put the plaque next to it, and then right after I took the picture, I returned the bitches. Mm. So I still got my picture. I didn't have to pay shit. Yeah. It's just so easy to troll the media at a certain point. Once, once they realize that your name is ringing bells and you actually are going to be a draw and you're going to get clicks, then it's like their, their filter for you lying just kind of like goes way down, and they're just down to post whatever about you because mm. they know it's going to work. And, like, if you watch that video, like – her reaction to getting the Lambo truck is like, like it's so obvious that this is not a real thing. Yeah. But, you know, people don't really think about all that. I don't think I even watched the whole video. I just seen <laughs> you, her, the Lambo, and then I remembered it was right after the whole Jason Love shit. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. You're just giving her the world. Yeah. No, Crazy. that's my baby, for sure. I got no hard feelings about her. I was sick yesterday. She was taking care of me like the most loyal fucking servant possible. And I was just thinking, I'm like, this is what people need to see. They need to know how tight me and her really are. They got to see this side of things. Yeah. So maybe that's the next step. Man, what's up? I'm ready to drop one of these fucking bombs. Yeah, okay. What else you got? You know what I want to get into. The Greedo thing first? Mine as well. Okay, let's do it. So I, I'm going to... I got fucking banned from L.A. apparently. <laughs> so I'll lay out how this took place from my perspective. Go ahead. Greedo has a former manager... From his hood, a homie of his who he was always rolling with early on in his career. So I was around him a few times as a result of them being super tight. Right. And then at a certain point, they had a falling out. I don't even know the details of how all that played out. But I believe that they tried to get into contact with Greedo. When Greedo got released, Greedo wasn't really fucking with them. So they hit me up and they say, yo, Adam, we got paperwork that proves that Greedo's a snitch. I say to them, I don't really do that. You know, like, I don't expose people for snitching. If it's already out there, if there's a whole conversation about it, then 
I could perhaps have a conversation about it, but I'm not going to be the one who stamps this paperwork and says that it's legit. But I told him, if you want to like get it verified or not verified, like if you want to find out if it's legit, I can give you 1090 Jake's number because he's pretty much the guy right now that would be the one who people are going to listen to about if this shit is real or not. So I put you guys in touch. And then there was a period of a couple of weeks where I didn't hear anything about it. And then you end up making the video about him. So what, what made you actually feel confident that the paperwork that they were showing you was valid? All right. So I'm glad you put that out there too, because nobody knows how I got in contact with those specific people. Right. Um, the point in time where nothing was going on was just me trying to get the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So they were able to send it over to me. I was able to read everything. Normally, when people fake paperwork, they fake a page, mm. right? This was 26 pages and then, like, another 20 pictures. So it was pictures from the search of the vehicle showing the meth, the guns, mm. the car itself, where they hid the meth. I'm reading everything. I'm like, bro, this ain't, this ain't fake. You know what I mean? It's got the man's social security number on it. It's got his address. It's got his tattoos on his body. It's got all this information. It's got the, the fucking officers' names, badge numbers, everything. So I'm like, nah, this is, this is official. You know what I'm saying? So I did the video on it, and I was honestly surprised that I knew there was going to be people on both sides. I was surprised that they said that paperwork doesn't count because it's an arrest report. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the fuck you mean it doesn't count? And then he never said it was real or fake. He said whether it's real or fake, whatever, whatever he said, you know? And we never had a back and forth. It wasn't like he said anything. I don't think he said anything disrespectful when you interviewed him. Greedo about you? Yeah. No, not really. I don't really, think he yeah. ever did. I don't think I've ever said anything disrespectful. Because Katie kind of tried to smear you and act like you were a fucked up dude. And then Greedo... Oh, I'm a, uh, listen, I'm going to get on that right, bitch but, in a second. But, but Greedo kind of jumped in and was basically had to acknowledge that he as a gangster can't hold it against you trying to expose yeah. well, snitches I mean, because he, you're he, doing he something that a, gangsters would appreciate. He as a gangster wouldn't come on here and say it's a problem if it is a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, so it goes both ways. At the same time, bro on parole, your freedom is more important than anything. You can't get tricked out the street. He'd right. be stupid to come up here and be like, oh, yeah, when we see 1090J, right. you know. And I've gotten messages from a lot of people from his hood, either one way or another. So I don't know what the fuck it is. It's not like I ever planned on going over there to begin with. But um, my whole thing was, if it ain't the truth, I'm going to find out what the truth is. And they, they said that the paperwork wasn't real, whatever, doesn't count. So what I did is I sent in a request for the paperwork, um, and I got it all, 26 pages. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much the exact same thing that was sent to me by the other grapes. Okay. So this is from the Potter County Sheriff's Office. Let me make sure there's not nothing there. You don't want to put out there that's crazy or whatever. But I have everything regarding the case. I'm not going to show you this page by page, but the statements are all in here. Mm -hmm. The statement that was given in the back of the police car saying, damn, man, we fucked up, we fucked up, da-da-da. And then the interview with the DEA agent where his co-defendant said, you know, I'm not going to talk. O3 Greedo was like, yeah, I got paid $3,000 to travel with him. I felt like something illegal go was going on. It's all in here and was sent by the sheriff's department. So anybody can request this from the sheriff's department. And the thing about this is they said, oh, it's fake because that's, that's not court paperwork. He said he's going to request his discovery. This report would be in his discovery. The only difference is it's going to have the court seals on it because you're getting it from the courthouse. Mm -hmm. So they're sending you a copy from the courthouse. This is the copy from the sheriff's department. The same fucking thing's gonna be there. Now he said he was gonna get the video. I requested the video, the body cam footage, um, and the interrogation. And like I said, the retention period, they said it doesn't exist. So if he's able to get that, it's gonna be from the DA and whatever he's gonna show is what he's gonna show. At the end of the day, the most 
bad thing about that was the interview with the DEA. That's what's really going to make the difference. I don't know if he can get that or will get that. But Katie, so I guess Katie was the paralegal because her father is one of the biggest lawyers in Texas. Right. And she had a lot of hurtful things to say about me <laughs> right. um, online. Right. And she brought up a lot of things that I found contradictions in. So Katie, like you know, shot a homeless man. Right. For getting too close to a Porsche or whatever it was. Got an attempted murder charge. And I'm assuming because of her father ended up with probation. Mm. So... This man right here, let me find his so name. So she took a plea deal? She didn't beat the, the case? I don't, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I'm assuming it was a plea, right? Okay. Because who the fuck goes to trial for attempted murder and leaves with probation? Right. That sounds kind of crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. But Ben Crump, who's a civil rights attorney, he had some things to say about her. Uh-huh. Along the lines of calling out, oh, yeah, a white girl with a lawyer daddy doesn't get any time for attempted murder. Right. She sues him for $40 million. What is libelous about him saying that? Man, fuck that. Listen to this, right? She sues him for 40 mil, but she was up here when y'all talked saying, oh, they grabbed Greedo because he's a black man, and this was before George Floyd when anyone gave a fuck. But the same black man you suing for $40 million is the head of the defense for George Floyd's family. Mm. So doesn't that tie in a little bit weird that the same case you're referencing, you're suing the legal defense for that man? It doesn't really add up. I was kind of a, a shocked that she mentioned George Floyd by name like at least three times well, during that conversation. By this here. I'm gonna <laughs> let you read this because I don't I don't want to get I'm guessing, sued. Yeah. This bitch loves to sue. This is what I did not have it in my go heart ahead, to go ahead to and repeat. read that title out from Daily Mail that anybody can Google. I already seen this on your Instagram story, so I know I'm not breaking any news. But photographs of Porsche driving lawyer daughter who shot lawyer's daughter who shot a homeless man in self defense appears on website advertising herself as an $800 an hour escort and stripper. And she is stripper. facing attempted murder charges for shooting Gerald Melton in Nashville on August 26th. And uh, her lawyer father said that she was like, oh, that's that's about the, the shooting. Yeah. And but. then this is the actual ad on the escort website. Now, mind you, this could be somebody using her pictures. Right. So we got to give her the benefit of the doubt. You know what I mean? Maybe this isn't her selling pussy for 800 But... The fact that all this ties in, it doesn't end with that. Apparently, in 2013, she was arrested for assaulting her mother, but all charges were dropped, most likely because of the dad, I'm assuming. Quacking bush. She called me a wigger, <laughs> but she had a rap video out. Really? That got taken down from YouTube on her own page. Lane is seen above in a video where she raps her song, Ski Tips Up, Hose Down. Yeah, so she went from a rapper to a country singer. An alleged escort, and then, yeah, the suing shit. I mean, she's all over the fucking place with it. So, you know, the thing about court, right? If I got somebody that's going to speak on my behalf, that would be like a credible witness. Mm -hmm. So the second she said anything, the internet assumed, oh, she must be a real attorney. Right. She must be this, she must be that. But then you go on Google and find out who she is. Is this still a credible witness? Right. Everyone, you, the fuck? Hold on. You sued a black guy after you shot a homeless guy for being whatever on some Karen shit. And then you're allegedly selling pussy. There was another article saying she threatened to hit a baby with a brick. A baby? There's a lot of shit on this girl. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know why the fuck she was so comfortable speaking out when I can find all this shit. Right. And then this is where she slipped up when y'all spoke. O3 Greedo denied the $3,000 statement she said when you were speaking to her oh the only thing he said about three thousand dollars and then she stopped herself and then she changed the topic mm. so she mentions it but then she caught herself so it's like at this point i'm not gonna keep making content on that situation i don't give a fuck if he's good or not in his own hood members of his own hood sent the shit to me how i view it is if there's a problem with that then you solve that within your inner circle. Right. The fact that it made it to my doorstep, you put me in contact with whoever, 
it got to me, y'all figure that out with them. Right. But I'm going to stand on, no, you can publicly get all this shit. It's available. So, I mean, I, I, Greedo's defense basically of himself seemed to be that he said that he didn't make those statements that they were that, that are written in the paperwork. Now, they are written in the paperwork, but it's like the statement was basically that this was that there's no evidence that he actually said these things, that the police could have been oversimplifying or just lying about what he said. Yeah, you know what my problem with that is, is I'll show somebody an arrest report, right? And I'll be like, is this your social security number? I did this with Pino uh -huh. when I found out he snitched. Is this your social? Yeah. Is this your address? Yeah. Is this your mother? Yeah. Did you get arrested on this day? Yeah. You got arrested for this? Yeah. You snitch right here? Nah. So everything else is fucking right except the shit you don't like? Mm. That's how I view it. Because they didn't know he was a rapper. And for whatever reason, he decided to say, I'm a rapper. Right. When he got pulled over. So it's not like they know who he is and they're trying to trump some shit up. And she's saying it was because he's black and this and that. And it's country as fuck over there. And they're all racist. But then she's suing civil rights lawyers and... George Floyd's legal. Yeah, that's what I found confusing about what she was saying. She's saying, like, they were pulled over because he's black. Maybe. But people I get think, pulled I over think, all the time, right? I think right? he would have been better off having his actual attorney speak out instead of her. Right. But um, with his situation, he said he's going to get the video. But it, were you saying that the video is not available? To me. That you tried to get it and it wasn't available? Yeah, but you can. I haven't requested it through the DA. I don't know if the DA still have it. Uh -huh. So with all these body cam footages that come out, all that shit, those are requests to the police departments or the sheriff's office. Right. Like the Island Boys, that was through the sheriff's office because all county jails are run by the sheriffs. Right. It's the county. So when you get locked up, they bring you in there. Everything in there is involved in the county. So you're going to reach out to the county to get that video. The county does not have the arrest footage of O3 Greedo anymore. Mm. So if his D, if the DA doesn't have it, the district attorney, it doesn't exist. Right, because this was like almost 10 years ago, right? Yeah, it was a while ago. Well, I mean, if it's in evidence, like with Pino's shit, I got that from the DA. Uh -huh. They keep it forever. Oh, okay. If I hit up the police department that arrested him, they wouldn't have it. You think Katie's kind of bad? No. You know? Fuck no. She followed me on Instagram. I was looking at her I page. I follow her on Instagram. Didn't look too bad. Yeah, I think we're cool. I think 800 is fair. She sent me a whole bunch of shit, like, you know, saying things about me, and I just sent her a little, <laughs> you know, but we follow each other. Oh, you follow her back. I didn't follow yeah, her back. Maybe she I followed should. me, and I followed her back, yeah. I, I tried it. I, I, yeah, <laughs> she'll send me messages going crazy. I'll just go like a post. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, be cool here. I don't know. Yeah, man. With the, with the Greedo thing, too, it's like, Part of his defense was basically like, why would I say these things? It would not make sense for me to have said these things. Exactly. That's why we're questioning why the fuck it yeah. was said. That's the fucking point. Yeah. And they're like, oh, but he didn't give a name. You don't have to give a name. Right. What the fuck you mean? Who did it? I didn't give a name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why the fuck would you say you felt like something illegal was going on? You got paid $3,000 to drive somewhere with somebody. But, but then his other thing is say that his co-defendant basically did like no time, and then he got 20 years and did five years, right? was a first-time offender. He didn't have an arrest history. Mm. So Pino's defense was, oh, my co-defendants only got probation. I went to prison. You had already been to prison. They never got in trouble with the law. But so Greedo already, it, it says it in the paperwork that the officer saw Greedo has a history of weapon-related offenses. Uh-huh. It doesn't say anything about that with the co-defendant. So the co-defendant gets probation and you get time in prison. If you're a felon and you get caught with a gun, that can become a Fed case. But, he okay, he got caught with pounds of meth and multiple stolen guns. Four pounds of meth, two stolen guns. But that's not going to get you probation even if it's your first offense, right? I would think. I mean, I don't know. If you got the rawest fucking lawyer in Texas who's getting his daughter off on an attempted murder charge, you never know. Money talks. Yeah. The other thing I have in question is I saw his co-defendant come up here and say what he said, but he's in two recordings saying otherwise. Saying that he, the, what, that's, he was saying what I thought. Why the fuck would you say some weird shit like you got paid to do this and that? And apparently there was a rumor that Greedo was trying to allege that the co-defendant was snitching. But the co-defendant came up here and said otherwise. Uh -huh. Boston and Richie's co-defendant went on Say Cheese and said otherwise. My whole thing is, like I said, I don't care, but I'm going to stand on what I do as a job. I don't put out fake shit. I'm not saying something or alleging towards something because I just pulled it out of nowhere. It exists. It's right there. Anyone can get it.
A lot of people don't want to get it. A lot of people are looking for the truth with their eyes closed. Right. It's like, I can't help you with that, you know? But, okay, let's let's put it in perspective, though. What we're talking about Greedo doing was basically allegedly saying a few boneheaded things during the process of being arrested, right? You can't really yeah. put this on the level of some of the other snitching no, 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 stuff no. that we've when talked about, right? you compare it to the level of other people, you're trying to downgrade what he said, right? But what you can do is try to break down the definition, the definition of snitching. Right. When two people commit a crime and one person tries to get out of it by placing blame, that's generally what people say is snitching. Mm. So with Greedo saying to a DEA agent, I felt like something weird was going on. I felt like something illegal was going on. Is that what I think he exactly said? Um, I didn't know about any of the meth of the guns, but I got paid $3,000 to drive from Vegas to Texas with him. Mm. What are you alleging? Yeah, I don't really... Put it in perspective, Adam. What are you a legend? I mean, his main argument was that he didn't say it. Gunna got pulled over in a car with Thug. They found some shit in the car. The police said, is this yours to Gunna? He said, it ain't mine. People say Gunna's a rat for that. Because if it ain't yours, it must be Thug's. Mm. What's the difference with this case? If that's all that Greedo said, though, I don't even think we'd be having this conversation right now. Alleged, if he if that's all that he allegedly said, because I'm not trying to close the door on. No, facts. You know? yeah. I mean, bro, if he comes out with a video sitting with the DA and he's like, I want a lawyer, I'm not saying shit. All right, I'm going to go with it. Yeah. They must have lied. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if that doesn't come out, what else do we have to go off? His word? So you've heard from Greedo directly or you've just had like associates of his tap in with you being I mean, upset about. Uh, no, I've never spoke to Greedo. Okay. I don't even know if they're his associates. They're just a bunch of DMs from people with grape emojis. <laughs> I don't know none of them. And see, that's the weird school. thing, too, is because people will say so and so, like people from his hood say that he's a snitch. That sounds very, no, very of, damning, of, but he clearly his, has um, people defending him and people his, who are against someone him. Someone that's close to him hit me up, and we didn't we didn't speak on no bullshit. Uh -huh. He was like, yo, if it's real, it's real. Motherfuckers going to stand on it, but I've never seen it. So I sent everything to him, and we didn't speak after that. Right. You know, like, I'm not really trying to keep up to date with the shit. Yeah. Because I got, bro, that you introduced me to, he'll still hit me up. And he's like, yeah, we're doing this, we're doing that. I was like, all right, but I'm not really invested in it. Mm. Like, I'm not going to promote a smear campaign. I'm just going to cover the paperwork. It's weird, too, though, because people initially were trying to act like this is why he got out in five years instead of 20. No, Which, that's that, not I the case, right? I think that has to do with the percentage of uh, how much time you got to do in Texas. Right. Um... All right, I guess if we're going to get into any more cases, we should probably talk about one of the most shockingly, obviously guilty situations, which would be the Rich Homie Kwan one. Mm. I met him a few months back, did the interview, seemed like a nice guy. But the audio that came out of him, to me, it doesn't seem like there's really like a path for him to justify it in any way. And I don't think that he has said anything on social media since this came out. I don't think so. How did you feel when you saw it? He's fucked. <laughs> yeah, what's crazy is, like, I didn't even know that he was claiming blood. So when I had to, you know, go watch videos and this and that, I see him piecing up and doing this. So I'm like, you know, people are trying to give him a pass. Like, was he really a gangster? And it's like, if you shaking up and throwing the shit up, then, yeah, what comes with it comes with it. But he flat the fuck out told. And that's what made me look at it crazy. You know, no disrespect, but... His manager made a video speaking on me. And it's like, why are you speaking on me when Young Thug allegedly was flaming the fuck out of y'all? Like, I don't understand. He got shot at. His dad got shot. Then something else got shot up. And you want to talk about me? Mm. Why aren't you? You know what I mean? Like, they really <laughs> fucking y'all up over there. Well, they there. pick and choose their fights, right? On Instagram, I, well, yeah. I, I guess he doesn't want to talk about Thug because that's what fucking happens. Yeah. But it's just like. Well, you can't talk about street shit or you can't talk about murders and shit, and but you can call the, out a YouTuber, the manager, right? The manager made a video saying everybody snitched before. Mother, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? This is how you defend your artist? That this, was a mind-blowing statement. This is statement. the equivalent of finesse two times moms defending him. Nobody should defend you except you. Mm. Because when other people start speaking up, it just makes shit look even fucking worse. I don't know why Rich Homie's manager decided to speak. It should have just been him. Mm. If he stood on it, he'd probably still have some type of fan base. I mean, his career, I don't really remember it really hitting like that anyway. And then right when that shit came out, I think it was either right when it came out or when I dropped my video on it, he was performing that night. With Boosie. 
Well, Boosie was there. I don't know if it was okay. with Boosie. I'm not gonna put Boosie. You know, we, we just imagine that it might have been an it awkward been conversation. In the same fucking building because Kodak and Boston Richie performed at Drewski shit. Right. But from what I heard, Kodak completely avoided Boston Richie, and people were yelling out Boston Snitchy from the audience. Mm. So they were in the same building, but I'm not gonna say they performed together. You know what I'm saying? Right. But Rich Homie, I don't know. He played. He fucked up. Yeah, I mean, the question that I had basically was like, why was Rich Homie even in this situation where he was giving this statement about Thug? Like, does he have the kind of relationship with the cops that he could just get a call and, and go down are, to the people station? People are so fucking retarded, right? Because they're like, oh, you can tell that ain't, he ain't speaking to the police because um, you can hear shit in the background. Somebody was playing the audio on a phone while recording it with another phone. Mm. That's why you hear shit in the background. Right. Everything he said is in transcripts. It's been written out. Who the fuck is wasting their time like that? Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, to me, there's nothing that he can argue. Apparently, this shit's from like 2016 to 17. Uh -huh. And they hit up the manager trying to extort him on some, A, hey, pay us or we're going to drop this. And he was like, y'all going to drop it anyway. But just the fact that they felt like they could extort you just shows the type of respect level they have for you. So I don't know why you making videos about me and everybody over there is trying you. But that's how it played it's out. crazy. But this is part of like a bigger problem, right? Where in Atlanta, or I guess it's not a problem depending on how you think about it, but where in Atlanta it seems like there's a ton of shit leaking out of the police department there and that this could potentially be putting cases in jeopardy. Yeah. Well, this is the thing about that, right, is I've been told that the DA is trying to crack down on who's getting what and how things are getting released because it ain't as simple as, like, requests. Uh -huh. Like, people are actually releasing big shit. What comes with that is you release something on a witness that's potentially going to testify, and now they don't want to testify, you can charge that person that fucked that up with whatever the charge is, tampering with a witness. Right. Now, if you tamper with a witness in a homicide case, you can be punished to the same effect as the homicide. So think about that. Yeah. Somebody kills somebody, you go fuck with that witness, now you're facing life. Right. Because it's a murder case. So. And so if you leak, like if you work for the police department and you leak stuff that ends up having well, a, look at a, look at the situation with YNW Melly, right? We just showed who the detective is. Right. If I had did that before he testified and before his mask was taken off, because they made him take the mask off in court, right? Right. Say I got that information and dropped it beforehand, and then he said, oh, I'm not comfortable testifying now because 1090 Jake exposed who I am. Imagine if I got hit with tampering with a witness right. in a capital case. Now I'm facing life. Isn't that crazy? At least you're like taking that into consideration because I could imagine a less adept YouTuber not thinking about that and revealing well, that kind of that's shit. That's why I look into things and strategically do certain shit. Mm. But it's just like in that situation, you know, they already made him take the mask off and then they revealed it in court how he found his picture. And all I had to do was listen and then do it. Looks like it already got revealed. So have you even had legal issues since you started this career? Or not, no, not yet. Knock on wood. Is this real wood? Yeah, that's good enough. Wood. Yeah, because that's always like, there's like the time in your career before you start getting sued, and then there's the time after you start getting sued when you I've start had, to realize. I, well, this is the thing, right? I'm exposing rappers for snitching. How's it going to look if you sue me right after? Right. What the fuck? And that's the first thing that uh, Katie fucking Quackenbush, whatever. Quackenbush is like one of the <laughs> illest names ever. <laughs> Listen. So right after the O3 Greedo shit came out, he said something, and then she said something about suing. I'm like, I'm getting sued by O3 Greedo? Mm. What the fuck? And then I reposted that, and then immediately she deleted all the posts. Right. It's like, you can't, how are you going to, same thing Boston Richie said. Oh, yeah, my lawyer was talking about suing him and this and that. How's that going to look for you? Right. It's kind of like, you know? It's actually harder to sue somebody than most people probably assume. Yeah, and you're going to pay a lot of fucking money. Yeah. Even if you have NDAs on somebody, it's hard to sue them unless there's like a, a demonstrable like effect to the business, which can be pretty complicated and difficult to prove. Mm. So what about the, the, the Kelpie shit? Kelpie signed on the dotted line. So before that, though, you think he could have got a bag? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he would have been hanging out right now when that happened. We went into. Just well, I, I'll just admit it now. We went into destroy evidence mode. Yeah, 
course. So that, like, the cops could have raided this building and they would not have found anything. Yeah. And then we also uh, basically, like, just had the conversation with yeah, everybody, everybody. Like, here sweating, feeling like, like criminals and Nothing shit. happened. Like, yeah. I, like, I was going into denial mode right away. Like, nothing happened. Who's like, helping? Yeah, you got beat up. Like, who the fuck beat you up? You can't prove you got beat up here. I don't, I don't remember. But then we got the paperwork together and we said, hey, sign this paperwork. Boom, we signed the paperwork. I'm like, oh, well, I guess we're putting the footage out. Jackass. And I mean, that came with like a good and a, a bad because on one hand, it makes the whole business look kind of unprofessional. And when yeah, I say it makes kind it look of like people can get touched, I mean, extremely unprofessional. Yeah. But then on the other hand, I don't know. It was great content and people went fucking crazy for it. So, it was, yeah, yeah. you know, well, before that was the flock on 16 situation, right? Yeah. When I look at my YouTube numbers for the last year, there's like two spikes right next to each other, like huge spikes. And I'm pretty sure that that's what that was. Yeah. And then there's Sharp and uh, Blueface and Krishan. And that was another massive I've spike. That. Yeah, yeah. That shit was crazy. Yeah. Somebody was just hitting me up the other day like, you want to show on Zeus? fuck is Zeus? That's the network that has the Blueface show. Oh, I don't watch that shit. I don't watch it either. Uh -huh. But that's actually what's fucked up is that they are still running the Blueface and Krishan show right now. Even though they're broken up now, but they're running the TV show that features them together, yeah. which to me is insane. Because if if you do a reality show normally, you basically kind of have to go into hiding and like completely just act as if none of this shit happened, so that it can still be a surprise when the TV show comes out. Which apparently Blueface and Krishan were not capable of doing that. That shit's so messy over there. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah. You you can see yourself ever having a relationship like that? Fuck no. 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 You in a relationship right now? No. Nah. If you were, would you tell me? Nope. Yeah, definitely I think not. I on said here. that to you before. Maybe <laughs> yeah. that was fresh and fit. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> nah, definitely. That's that's fucking up my situations. That's Adam. one thing me and my girl realized. Like, well, we said that early on. We're never gonna shit on each other online. Like yeah. that was just like ground ground floor rule. Like we're never gonna do that. We're never gonna I, step I just, into that I territory. Like, I like privacy. Same. Yeah. You know what I mean? I value that. And especially like us having a kid, then you really don't want to play with that like that. This whole thing is like it seems messy to other people, but it's not to us. So it's like it's like. Well, that's another thing too. Is I, I'll post my daughter though, mm. and I had somebody recognize my daughter before me. Out in public? Yeah. I might never post my daughter again. That shit was crazy. Yeah. And she she cause she got a Louis Vuitton purse, so the girl saw her and then saw the purse, and then eventually saw me. And ran up and was like, oh, my God, I knew it was you because I saw her in the purse and da 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 da, -da. Yeah. yeah, like, before, we felt like we kind of had it good and we could play both sides where my my girl had, like, a mom TikTok where she's posting all this, like, cutesy shit. And then also we're doing porn, but nobody really gave a fuck. Now yeah. this shit is so viral that they're taking innocent videos. Like, there's a video of my girl. Uh, we, we did a, a Sesame Street makeup. So I'm I'm Bert, my girl's uh, Elmo, and my, my kid was dressed up as the Count. And it's like a whole like 60 second TikTok of us doing the makeup and everything, but there's one clip in it where she's breastfeeding, and people are just taking that and being like, "Look at these these demons with with face paint. Look how evil this looks." It's like, bro, if you watch that TikTok in its entirety, it's just like a cute ass little TikTok of us all hanging out. My daughter was a cop for Halloween. <laughs> yeah. What do you tell your kid? Your kid about cops? Nothing. No. No, I'm not gonna put things in her head that you know. Yeah. I'm not gonna the fuck. I'm a good dad. Like I don't do the bullshit. Like, oh yeah, you finna nah. Right. You wanna be a cop for fucking Halloween? I bet. I'm gonna be the criminal. I had the handcuff on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what's what the fuck is somebody <laughs> gonna say? She know. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right, play with her and you gotta fuck with me. Yeah. We like, have I'm not gonna force my lifestyle doesn't apply to them. Right. That's yeah. just how it goes. But that's hard for people to comprehend that you want something different for your kid. Yeah. Fucking retarded. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because look at how sad the uh, King Vaughn situation is. When they were showing the little boy watching the videos of him. And you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't don't keep up with that aspect of things. Mm. And how things affect people. And, you know, or just not being there, doing a bid, and your kid is raised without you. And that does things to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So with mine, nah. She want to be a cop, she can be a cop. She want to be a doctor, she can be a doctor. Mm. I'm not gonna let her dress up as a fucking gang member. That's I'm not a good going idea. For that shit, you know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, once you're in the public eye, too, it's like, you know, I'm gonna be very mindful of I don't anything. I care about the public eye, though, bro. I'll publicly beat the shit out of somebody. Like nobody's just gonna say something about my daughter, and, <laughs> right. you know, especially if we're like in person. Like I'm not for the criticizing, and I don't do that. Mm. I'm not gonna play about that. I just feel like now at this point. 
it's probably way easier and simpler for me to just never put my kid on the internet anymore because even like little things like my kid has a little kid makeup set and it's not like makeup makeup but it's just like little powder or whatever and she'll just be like putting on her face and messing around or whatever and i could just already imagine that somebody would see that and be like, look at look at his daughter is wearing makeup at this age. Isn't that fucked up somehow? They got boys wearing makeup yeah, at well, young ages, and that's supposed to be normal. But see, it's this just is that we're now yeah. we're creeping into the cancel shit. You're feeding the we beast. We can't even talk about that type of shit. But um, why well, you upset about Drake painting his nails and Uzi and all these people? I don't give a fuck as long as it doesn't go to the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you a grown man, you want to make those type of decisions. See, I like Andrew Tate. Mm. I do. Yeah, I fuck with him, Sneeko. Them boys. Red pill Jake. Okay. That's yeah, good to know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've never met Tate. I've met Sneeko. Right. Um, but I agree with a lot of the shit that they say. Mm. Uh yeah, I just I don't like Yesterday I had my first ever real conversation with Andrew Tate on Aiden Ross's stream. I was watching that. And it was like he was so like cool and respectful and basically just said, like, your lifestyle is not for me, but I understand everybody does their own thing, yada yada. Yeah. The clips were like Andrew Tate goes in on Adam Twenty Two and Lena for their oh, lifestyle, mad, whatever. Respectful. He was actually super cool about yeah, it, and was just, people will yeah. try to find any reason to fucking hate him. Yeah, because which, they which either when I thought about it too, I was like, whatever. if me and Andrew Tate getting on that live stream would have been infinitely more viral if he actually really condemned me and said like, "Fucking, you're a terrible person and terrible dad." Everybody yeah, would have stood little, in line to see that. Who was the little kid that was talking shit? Oh, Neon. Yeah, and then everyone was in the comments like, "Bring bullying back." <laughs> yeah, Neon like Aiden Ross basically has like other characters that he brings onto the that, stream that to fucking, talk shit for him. Yeah, you know, I like Aiden Ross shit too, but fucking yeah. that kid right there, like, come on, bro. Man, but they just they expose Sneeko. For what? For like you know he says he's Muslim and shit, and then his like this girl that he was like seeing or whatever exposed text messages of him telling her to get Molly and I think trying to line up threesomes or some shit like that. Which to me, hey. My kind of guy. Yeah. I'm not doing Molly right now, but I've done a lot of it in the past. It's a great time. But when you're like saying you're a Muslim, it's a little bit harder to get Everybody away with that, I guess. Up. Yeah. But also it's like, do you really need to be claiming this religious belief if you're then gonna be living like the opposite of it? But, I mean, bro, you know how many gang members I know go to prison and turn Muslim just for the safety aspect of it? Same shit. That same girl was sucking dick in here. <laughs> Literally. She did a Patreon episode. I don't even mean to expose her. Do I know who the girl this. is? Maybe. Uh, is it that one fucking something Powell? No, not Selena. Yeah, she be going crazy. Yeah, she's insane. Everybody. I seen Andrew Tate reject her. Did he? What? I seen that. I was like. That's a wise idea on his part. She says something about fucking him. He's like, I only fuck for love or money. Mm. And she's like, I got money. He just laughed. I mean, if you want to, like, Selena Powell got nothing but love for her. But when she was the first ever episode of Plug Talk. And she was running away from the dick. Yeah. Like the porn star, not me, the porn star guy was fucking her. And she's all like, kind of like, she just didn't look comfortable. It's too much. I'm like, how you fuck this many dudes? And you're you're like squirming away when this guy's fucking you on camera. I was very confused. Now, this doesn't look like a professional to me. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Wasn't. I was trying to tell my girl the other day, like, let me fuck Selena Powell for, for OnlyFans. You never she, fucked her? No, I think my girl's a little worried about having her too associated with our brand, you know? Which is very she, reasonable. She'd she be saying some wild shit. She's out of her mind. She told me Antonio Brown got a small dick too, which is apparently everybody else is under the alternate impression. I don't I don't I don't have a comment <laughs> for that, Adam. I'm not in that world. I don't know nothing about that. You don't need to have a comment, yeah. No. Um are you a FYBJ main fan? No. Have you seen it? I've seen him, yeah. You tuned in? I'm, like, I'm not a fan in the sense like I okay. listen to his shit and all that. Right. I don't got nothing bad to say about him. He Kind of like has made a whole stir because he's talking like real, real frankly and openly about shit that he's seen go on in Chicago back in the day. Like, for instance, him him even just going on an interview and saying that Tay Savage shot at him or yeah. that Fredo Santana shot at him. And he's just saying it like super frankly, which is like it's a weird thing because in Chicago, even your ops, dudes don't really be talking about that kind of shit so openly but he's talking about, he's calling Tay Savage a killer, saying like, yeah, yeah, he killed Blazing Doll's mom. He's just saying shit that like other people wouldn't be expected to say. Now, granted, like the thing about uh, him killing Blazing Doll's mom, that was already like fully documented in some of these like uh, hood well, could documentaries. Could you say he's smart then? Because what he's saying is things that nobody can get in trouble for and he's going viral for doing it. Yeah. Jay Hood, I feel like got more 
flack for the shit that he was putting out. Well, he, the, the craziest thing that Jay Hood said is that Vaughn told him that Melly really killed his friends. Yeah, no, Jay Hood be saying some shit that's like, nah, you're tripping. Yeah. But saying somebody, like if I said, oh yeah, Adam 22 shot at me back in the day. Yeah. It's my word against yours. You're not going to get charged for that. Right, yeah. And then if you beat a fucking murder and I'm like, oh yeah, Adam 22 really killed that bitch. Yeah. You're not going to get charged. Yeah. So it's like, he sees a way to make shit happen. He's been, you got everybody saying, do your homework, mm -hmm. all that shit. So if you, he he got some some light on him right now. He's probably like the breakout star of 2023 in this whole like hood media you think so? landscape. I mean, he's definitely up there. Like people are just talking about him constantly. He's always yeah. in the conversation. And even like the crazy thing that we've seen happen in the last couple of days is just him hopping on IG Live with his ops that like everybody assumed that if they were to ever run across each other that they would kill each other like the, him and Tay Savage thing. And now, now all of a sudden they're on stream. And I, I even saw, saw King Yella saying that Tay Savage himself could kind of change the face of Chicago gangbanging because this is a real BD that really went and sat down for 10 years and he's hopping on IG Live with GDs and just having a conversation with them and keeping it cool. Like, that really could change the culture to a certain degree. And anything that is able to relieve any amount of tension when it comes to a real deadly gang beef like that, we should all look at that and be like, that's fucking dope if we can kind of change the cultural norms around that shit. Yeah, I mean, they say Tay Sav got a history. Yeah. So, you know, with that comes power. He's got influence, but at the same time, Chicago is Chicago. Mm -hmm. The new generation, all it takes is one of them to kill another one, and the war is reignited, you know? And also, so Jay Main is... I don't think the responsibility of uniting Chicago should fall on him. Right. You know, I don't think that it could solely be him that ties everything. But as far as, like, the industry and that generation, like, yeah. Tay Sav, King Yellow, like, their generation... They might be able to, you know? Yeah, because it is like it's it's not even about responsibility. It's just about who makes what look cool. Because for all these years, like one thing you can say about King Vaughn is he made being a killer seem like the coolest fucking yeah, thing in the who, world. Who the fuck made anything positive look cool? Yeah, well, look at like Odd Future. They for cool. a period of time, Odd Future, Tyler the Creator and all of them, in like the early two thousand tens, they made uh, they were like some of the first artists I seen come out of L.A. Isn't that like underground shit, though? It was, but it was really fucking popular for a while. But they they presented like an archetype of an L.A. youth who wasn't involved in gangs, who liked skateboarding and fashion and yeah. kicking it with girls and maybe like smoking weed and drinking and shit. But it was like if you offer up an alternative persona or an alternative style of being to kids that is different than like the gangbanger thing or, or whatever, then that could ultimately, like, let kids know, like, that they... And I remember even when I moved here, 2010, 2011, I had BMX homies that clearly were influenced by the Odd Future thing or influenced by BMX and skate culture. To, and, and they would tell me, like, nah, gangbanging shit, that's lame. And I quickly figured out that they were not the norm, but... A lot of people say that's lame, though. Mm. But at the same time, if I do a video on Tyler, the Creator, and I do one on Tay Sav, which one do you think on the pop? But Tyler, Creator is huge. Yeah, Your audience doesn't give a fuck about him, but no, yeah, he's huge, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Though. He's, yeah. he's definitely made. I mean, a lot of people are big. J. Cole's big. Yeah. That doesn't mean that in this other world, they're going to have an effect. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, just the negative always outweighs the positive because people seek the negative. That's why they say don't watch the news. The news is 99% negative shit. Right. Nobody gives a fuck about who graduated. They want to hear about that fucking triple homicide and O Block, mm -hmm. and then the rapper that just made a diss song about it, like, that's just how it is. I mean, the news at a certain point figured out that they could be on for 24 hours a day, and they could always be highlighting the most dramatic, negative possible thing. And, you know, you see that with everything from, like, you know, the, the submarine. All we heard was that about that sub for, yeah. for a week or two there. And there was mad memes about it. <laughs> Everything was imploding. Just the idea that somebody would be like on the verge of death, that a bunch of guys might be dead or about to die, and that we were all able to sort of slowly watch it play out. Um, okay, so how do you feel about the, uh, the, the situation or the standing of the QCP situation? Because I remember going on the news, on No Jumper News at a certain point, and saying – it's going to be a big decision to see if somebody like Gucci Mane is trying to stand next to P after this. I don't, I don't, I don't think it, it didn't have any effect on how those no, dudes treat No, I don't him. think anyone gives a fuck. Yeah. He's already up there. He's very fucking rich. Everybody thought that I was going to get assassinated right after that video <laughs> came out. Um, 
I don't think Gucci ca- like that's the thing, bro. Is when people get to a certain level, no one really cares. Yeah, all that street shit goes away. Mm. The street shit only matters when you're down bad and broke and fucked up. Once you get money, nobody really cares. It's the same thing with like killing. Mm. Motherfuckers will kill you for nothing because they have nothing. When you got something to lose, now you don't want to do it. Mm. Now it's like, what's the point? Same thing with robbing. If you got money, why rob? You're not addicted to robbing. You were robbing when you were broke. Mm-hmm. Gucci's up a ton of money. QCP's up a ton of money. Who gives a fuck? Right. You know what I mean? Like, anything could come out. Something could come out on Gucci. That's not going to affect him. So it's like... I wonder if behind the scenes, when they're having conversations about P getting exposed or whatever, I wonder if they're just laughing at that. Bro, the whole Atlanta knew about that shit for years. Mm. The guy that died, I talked to one of his family members. He was like, everyone knows about this shit. Everyone's just scared to talk about it Mm. because we don't have the money. That's all it comes down to. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you got the bag, you control the situation. Who even exposed it before you? Or were you the first one to bring it to the- Nah, fuck no. I didn't do it first. Who who talked about it first? Properly. I don't know. Mm. I think I just seen it online. Yeah. Or maybe academics- did he talk he about it? I feel like you talked it. about it first. I think he went over it, whatever, because it was a piece of paper that was shown. Right. And then I went and found it because mm-hmm. it exists. It's in the Fulton County. Anybody can look it up. Yeah. It just feels like if P's not going to get rejected socially for it, then it makes no sense that Gunna's going to get rejected. Although Gunna told on a famous rapper, which is different than yeah, P telling are, on people somebody. People are going to be biased on the situation because of who's involved. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck about who P told on and the guy's dead. Yeah. Versus... Gunna told on Thug. Yeah. And Thug ultimately is more beloved than Gunna. Yeah, of course. Which means that Gunna's going to be the one who takes the, the heat for it. some type of way, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if Gunna's like invited to Rolling Loud and shit at this point. I wonder if it's safe for him to even go. Yeah. or But I wonder if like Rolling Loud would even feel like it was worth the risk to have him booked. I'm not sure if he's like booked for this weekend in Miami or anything. I don't know. I know a couple of people out of Finesse is there, Greedo's there. I don't think Boston Rich is there. But I think he has been on some of them. I was surprised because Bootleg Kev owns a club in Arizona, and he told me that Boston Rich, performed there, and it was sold out. People loved it. I was like, oh, I guess that shit ain't nothing. He made good music. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's it's If anything, it makes you kind of want to reexamine the 6ix9ine thing because even though he told in like the most extreme fashion – it is kind of weird now, like, somebody like me just listening to Gunna and not really thinking about the snitching shit that much. Bro, the whole 6 9 thing wouldn't even have been that bad if 6 9 was black. Mm. 6 9 was Mexican, so people were already like, oh, you ain't even in the culture for real. You're not right. that. You're not this. They already hated him. A lot of people could see through the tough guy act. They're like, you're really pussy. And then when everything proved to be that, everyone's like, see, I was right. Yeah. That's all it was. They just hated him. There was already such a reason to hate him. It's like Jake Paul losing the fight. Yeah. Everyone was watching the fight because they were hoping he would lose. Right. But he was winning. You know what I mean? And once you actually take a L, everyone's like, ha ha, see, I was right. The real crazy thing with 6 9 though, was how so many people, including somebody like me, who did not really get along with him throughout most of the time he was free, I liked the music. There was a bunch of songs that I loved. And then he has not made a song that really connected with the culture since then. And you can blame that on playlisting or whatever, but I don't know. It's like when that shit happened to him, his whole, like, the public's ability to take him seriously as a musician just seems like it went away. Although that apparently does not extend to the Latin community. No, they do shit different over there. But, um, you know, one thing that I always questioned, too, was with 6 9 he was dissing the dead like crazy. Mm. So it's hard for me to imagine how anybody supports that shit. Right. Like, he's showing up and doing that. He went to Old Block. And, right. you know, he was just doing a lot of shit, trying to antagonize Dirk, like... That's why when the Kings beat the shit out of them, nobody has sympathy. Yeah. We forget that that was not that long ago, and that was, like, one of the biggest news stories of the year. I mean, I got some breaking news on that situation. What? Case is done. Those guys, the charges were dropped? The armed robbery was dropped, and the father got probation for beating the fuck out of 6 9 Really? And he wants to do an interview. Really? Yeah. With you or with who? With me. You want it? I mean, shit. I don't know. What am, what am I going to say to them? Fly him out. <laughs> he, gonna, he beat the fuck out of 6 9 That's a yeah, good yeah. conversation. I would like to talk to him. Yeah, why yeah, not? Yeah, them boys really. Damn. Why did he get off so easy when there's so much well, evidence? Because the robbery was bullshit. It wasn't about the what, robbery. Would they take the was, phone or something? 
Yeah, like the phone, Crocs, whatever. It was bullshit. And then apparently what actually happened is he walked outside with the sneakers but then threw them back. Oh. They just didn't show it. So, you know, the robbery got dropped. Probation for the ass whooping. You're good. I keep seeing shit that makes me, like, way less scared of committing a violent crime. Like, Blueface shooting that guy outside the strip club in Vegas and then getting probation for it. I'm like... So you're telling me that if it comes down to it, I could just shoot somebody. I'm going to be able to walk away from it if I get a good lawyer. That's wild. Yeah, I feel like I would have never went to prison if I had money. Oh, yeah, 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 right. I feel like I would have beat my whole case. Yeah, probably. But that was like the best learning experience for me. So yeah, happened for a reason. Who knows how if you had got deeper and deeper into whatever the fuck you were doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it should have been fucked up. You could have got to the point where you got a case that you wouldn't have been able to walk well, away from. Well, if I never moved back up to Boston... Because I got out in July of 2015. July of 2016, I got arrested for chasing somebody with a gun. Mm. If I had did that in Florida, I would have had a mandatory life sentence. So it's crazy to think about how things could have played out. Mm. I should appreciate how it did. You got to wonder about Spot him, Got him too. What about him? Well, he just like, it seemed like his career just froze Man, and just ended. midget bitch. But Fuck it. We just got into it uh, on Instagram. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, the thing is, um, it, it was like a blood holiday the other day for mm. the East Coast. So the day before that, I uh, put all like the fake blood rappers that got exposed for snitching mm -hmm. on my Instagram story. And I seen that he was throwing bees up and shit. I'm like, how? How? What blood? Are, like, who are you with? Right. All your pictures are by yourself. What bloods are you with to make you even feel comfortable talking about, uh... And then uh, he put something on his story, and I sent him his statement in his DM. And um, me and King AK-47 jumped on live because I'm blocked from going on live. I basically just went through his paperwork again. You're flat out told. Right. I was like, there's no... But yeah, his uh, that's kind of what fucked up the situation with me and Say Cheese. Oh, really? I think we're good, though, because I jumped on Say Cheese live the other day, and he said he wants to do an interview. Really? So we should be good. So Say Cheese wasn't fucking with you for a period of time because that was his artist and you exposed That's him. That's what I assumed, yeah. But I don't, I, I've heard Sean Cotton have the conversation in other interviews about Spot Him, Got Him, where he seems to be fully acknowledging and accepting that he, he ratted. Yeah, I heard Sean don't give a fuck. Yeah. Sean's getting his bread. I mean, he's signed a lot of artists. You can't be just giving a fuck about all of them in the yeah, long run. Yeah, I don't run, know. Right? I mean, that was just my assumption. And um, I would comment on a lot of Say Cheese posts and my comment, I just couldn't find it. I felt like they were deleting my shit. Oh, really? Yeah. And then, like, I felt like when they would post something with me, it's like, oh, alleged paperwork drops on Boston Richie. It doesn't mention me. Mm. It's not alleged if you can fucking find it for yourself. So I felt like certain things were, like, biased towards me. But from what I've heard, we've yet to have a conversation. From what I've heard, it ain't none of that, though. Interesting. Shout out to him. Yeah, Sean Khan said he was going to interview me at one point, and I never heard back about it. So I wonder. I always wondered if he was. Well, let's see who gets it first. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe he just hates white people. Hey. Understandable. <laughs> Maybe. We got I a lot, don't know. A lot of smut on our race's name, Jake. Well, I don't think he's interviewed too many <laughs> white people, right? You milk. know, you know they he say always I'm from milk. New Hampshire now. Really? Yeah, milk doesn't count though. <laughs> Most, most You're black. a secret black guy. You see yeah. that video on Jubilee? Yeah, I saw that. That's, <laughs> I that's how I actually found out Milk's name and then found out he has a sealed case. Oh, he does? Yeah, but it could just be a juvenile case that they sealed because it's, you know, God, whatever, whatever. If you yeah. exposed him as a snitch, you'd be doing us all such a favor. That'd be crazy. Right? That'd be great. You know what? <laughs> Mad people from L.A. said that to me. Really? Because I got a guy out here that does a lot of the court shit out here. Right. And he's who I had going looking at him. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I could see it. Um, okay, what else we got here? Oh, yeah, this is... So, w what's the status of the Island Boys? You think that them making out kind of... <laughs> I, th I think they're trying to uh, get a new audience. Mm. They see potential, you know? Maybe they're going to be the Island Girls soon. This is why, how I see it, is that if you are a dude and you start an OnlyFans, I've heard this from, like, male OnlyFans guys, p male porn stars, where basically, like... You sign up for OnlyFans, you think that you're going to be fucking bitches and getting done for bitches and everything, and that that's going to be your OnlyFans. But the reality is, is that most of the people who are signing up for your OnlyFans are gay dudes, and those gay dudes start asking you to do all kinds of sus shit. They want to see you put your booty on the on the kitchen sink. They want to see you, that's, you know... That's the reality of that? Putting toys in your mouth, you know, like all kinds of wild shit. 
So I've talked to dudes who are like, no, I have a super strict line. I don't do anything zesty at all because once you start to do it, like they offer you hella money for it. But if you start to do it, it's a slippery slope. You're going to keep doing weirder and weirder shit. But I think the Island Boys are broke as fuck to the point where they're listening to the comments on OnlyFans and they're starting to realize like, oh shit, like if we start fucking around with each other, we're going to get the bag, which is, it's, it's almost hard to comprehend because like, I don't have a brother. I have a sister. If I had a brother, the idea of like doing something sexually with him on OnlyFans for money is like hard to fucking wrap your head around. But I think that that's really what happened to them is that they started getting all these messages on OnlyFans wanting to see them fuck around. And they decided like, well, I'm not going to jerk you off. I'm not going to suck your nipple, but we could kiss a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's how, that's how I think it played out. <laughs> You've really been thinking into this shit, huh? Well, just because I've heard was, these dudes was, talk about what it's it like. I thought it was weird that uh, one of them had a fucking seizure, and then right after the seizure, they come up with that video. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe he tried to give him mouth to mouth and bring him back, and they were like, "Hey, <laughs> that's you know, how that maybe, took we place. Can, maybe we can fucking monetize this." Oh my god! I just. The, the trajectory of their careers were, like, keep in mind, when I interviewed they them. They started off gangbanging, sex, money, murder. But even by the time I interviewed them, they were like, no, nah, we're not open. bloods. It's not, you yeah, know. Yeah, because I cleaned that up. Yeah, and that was before the Island Boys arc, which I think they became convinced that that was going to turn them into real rappers. Yeah. But now, they, like, what, are they going to do, like, full-on, like, gay porn together? I don't know. It seems like, like, what other direction would they go in if this keeps going like this? I don't fucking know. Right? I'm not in that realm. I don't know what the fuck they got going on. I just see what you see. I don't shit's know. It's crazy. Man. It's hard to go back to the music. But they never had good music. Never. No one ever took that shit serious. But the, they yeah. really blew up off of being made fun of. As yeah. sad as it is to say. And then they tatted themselves the fuck up and just really thought people were respecting them. Yeah. When people were like, look at these two. But my favorite story is how Kodak had them go to the, his house and then he convinced who was at the time Red 4X, he convinced him to change his name to Kodiak Red. Yeah. And then never did anything with him or never signed him or anything like that. Because I think the snitch allegation came out. Oh, really? You think it was because yeah. of that? I think he just, like, was fucking with him and trolling him in real life in well, the first place. Well, they went place. from gang banging to not gang banging to snitching to... They were always beating their girlfriends up, and then now they got the gay shit. Yeah. Maybe they need to sit down with Andrew Tate and, you know, get some life coaching. Well, that is a good idea. He could help them out. I'm going I'm to throw Aiden Ross that idea. See what that I kind of want it for myself, but I mean, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if I tell Andrew Tay, like, hey, I got these dudes. They're called the Island Boys. You got to talk to him. I think he's. No, you got to, like, mail them over there, though, so he can beat the shit out of them and fucking. Throw know? him on the PJ. We're going to Romania. Yeah. I would go. I would go, too. But I've seen the videos I'm not where, bringing where the... they make them cage fight and shit. I'll do it. If me and you were on a PJ with the Island Boys for 12 hours or whatever it takes to get no, to Romania, I don't want to go with them. We're don't... going to fight them by the end of it. We're, we're, we're not going to be able to handle Just being around them. slapping the shit out of them. Dude, they're going to be making out on the flight and shit. No, oh, so they can't go. I don't Good. know. Okay, so what's going on with you and uh, the celebrity lawyer, Bruce Rivers? Shout out to Bruce. Um, Bruce, Bruce. Ain't, ain't nothing going on with us. In my opinion, he was paid by Boston Richie. He says he wasn't. In my opinion, I think he was. Him and the uh, the other lawyer. Who's the other one? Uh, that one. Mo. Yeah, him. So I think they both got paid because the very first time they ever reacted to one of my videos, it just so happens to be the same fucking video. It just seemed pretty fucking weird. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I know that Boston Richie pays the blogs to post everything that he says and does, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but that was the only time they ever reacted to anything that I did was just the Boston Richie video. So it didn't really make any fucking sense. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, after that, obviously, he goes on academics and does an interview. I never saw that. Is it worth watching or is it a bunch of cap from your perspective? Boston Richie? The Boston Richie interview that he did with Ack. Yeah. You think it's a bunch of cap? Yeah, oh, I know it is because <laughs> I'm directly involved in the situation. Right. That's why I was wondering why academics never brought me on to hear my half, oh. which made me think that you probably got paid to fucking hear one perspective and then not bring the other on. Because, you know, that situation happened with QCP, and he brought up WAC 100. So I hit him up like, what's up? You going to let me come up then speak my piece, or you just going to let him run his narrative? 
And he kind of gave me the runaround. With Academics gave you the runaround. Yeah. Interesting. So that's when I started to see like the, you know, the industry favors. Bring me on, but don't bring him on. Mm. You know what I mean? Let me let me let me speak my side. You not say nothing, and then just don't let Jake say his. So, but with Bruce Rivers, nah. I mean, shout out to him. Whatever he's doing, what he's doing, he's making his money. I think he got paid though. Really? Just in my. But you think that the opinion. stuff that he was saying about Boston Richie was stuff that he couldn't possibly really believe? Bro, you think he give a fuck about Boston Richie? What would make two random ass lawyers make videos defending a rapper without even getting the paperwork? See, that's the thing is, I got the paperwork. Bruce Rivers never got it. I sent it to him. You see what I'm saying? So you mm -hmm. made you had an opinion on something you didn't even look into. And then I sent it to you. You didn't make another video. You're making me want to go down the rabbit hole and check out the content he made about Boston Richie in the first place, because that's that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. That's a brand deal. You're a lawyer, you get you get a brand deal to just defend somebody. I mean, that's the first thing I asked him too, is were you did you get paid? Right. No, I didn't get paid. You know, somebody paid me and you know, they paid me for my opinion. That would fuck with the reputation. It's like, yeah, we agree, but that doesn't mean you're not lying. The thing with Mo is that his M.O., ironically, because his name is Mo, is that he kind of, like, always defends the rapper. Like, yeah, I think Mo's just trying to look cool because he's a civil <laughs> lawyer. He ain't even a real lawyer. Right. And then when he started speaking on the situation with me, I hit him up. I was like, yo, you're in New York. Like, I can have somebody hand deliver this shit to you in New York. Uh -huh. No, bro, it's all good. You don't got to do all that. Well, then stop fucking talking how you talking because you talking like... Motherfucker can't Google your address. Like, mm. you work in an office. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, because he was, like, dissing when he when he made the video by me. You know what I mean? So it was like, like... You felt like he was clowning you? Yeah. And there's a fine line between, you right. know... Having an opinion and really dissing. Yeah, that's what made me feel like your opinion was bought. Because mm. not only are you sharing your opinion, you're trying to discredit mine. So that was my whole viewpoint on it. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, Mo, I don't know. Sometimes it just feels like, like at first when I really started watching stuff, I felt like I could really trust him. But then there's just a certain extent where well, I'm bro, like, people, it feels like you're. People hear the word lawyer. I feel like he's playing to the audience a yeah, little bit too much. People hear the word lawyer and automatically think you're fucking this, that. And there's different kinds of lawyers. I think Mo is civil cases. Mm -hmm. People suing each other. That's not criminal. Well, his whole business but is everything that he covers on social social media is criminal. He wants Bruce you, Rivers is a criminal lawyer. Right. But Mo wants to help you sue your employer. That's like what, what all the this fuck stuff is about. Do with Tory Lanes. I know, but like he'll get attention from something like that, and his whole plan is like then once you decide that you want to sue your your employer because they didn't give you the proper amount of breaks or whatever that you think of him right away because you just saw him reporting on Tory yeah, Lanes for the past few months. So that but that's that, that's his that's business what I'm model. Saying the lack of education for the viewers that watch is because this lady, Katie Quackenbush. Spoke up for Greedo, and then everybody naturally assumed, oh, this must be his lawyer, so everything 1090 Jake said was fake. Mm. Just because they hear the word attorney. When the whole time her fucking dad was the co-defendant's lawyer, not even his. Right. Um, are, just a side note, are we going to get the footage of uh, Lil J jumping off the balcony in, in prison? I don't know. Is that, like, something that they could potentially submit for? Possibly. Chicago Rares. That's, that's the guy. <laughs> I know. I just followed him, and they were like, he, th thank you for the follow. I'm like, oh, you're a real person. Okay, nah, yeah, cool. He's, he's got the shit. Yeah. Yeah. He, when he sees this, he's going to be like, oh, yeah, he shot to be out. Da, 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 da. But yeah. he's into it with Flacco. About what? Flacco called him a bitch or something because he's anonymous. Really? Yeah. I can't begin to defend a lot of Flacco's opinions about I told stuff. him I'll slap the shit out of Flacco if he sends me 10 bands. Really? Yeah. I would have gave you five, so, you know. Hmm. Oh, I don't want to be part of that. <laughs> um, all right. We, I got two more of people that have been kind of exonerated in the public eye, I think. Uh, so let's start with the Rollo thing. Mm. You reported on it, and then you en ended up ultimately taking his side and deciding that he most likely didn't snitch. Yeah. How, how, what was that conversation like with him? How long did you guys speak for? Uh, I didn't speak to him. He's in prison right now, so he can't communicate with anybody. Oh, okay. Um, but speaking to the people that I spoke to, I understood what he was saying. It was literally a matter of, yeah, I had someone willing to take the blame. They would have got a lesser charge, lesser time, and I would have gave them a shitload of money, money that they've never made. Mm -hmm. And knowing the amount of money that he really makes, I was like, okay, none of your co-defendants came out and said you snitched. Nobody's saying that you snitch except for people that aren't even involved in the case. 
And then the same guy that actually was exposing Rallo the whole time just got exposed for having fake jewelry and all this other shit. Mm. So me, you know, there was a little joke going on like, yeah, he's exposing paperwork, but he never got the paperwork on his jewelry. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I saw through it. I don't feel like there was anything definite that said who he snitched on. And there was nothing. Nobody was saying, yeah, I got snitched on. So it's like, how am I going to say he snitched? Mm. Who did he tell on? Who even got you to start investigating that in the first place? Mm, I think just the internet. It, was, it just started to go up, and mm -hmm. I just looked into it. So Interesting. Okay. What about the Bandman Kevo thing? Because you ended up kind of clearing him, too. Kevo was, none of his paperwork was bad. Okay. This shit was fine. It was two people that did an interview with 16 shot him, and those two people actually snitched. Uh. They tried to put that jacket on Kevo. I cleared that and then actually found their paperwork. And that put them in a whole fucking situation because one of them was in jail when the video came out that he was a rat. And then the other one had to switch states. So that's, I guess that's common. You shouldn't have tried to put that on Bam Man Kevo. Wow. That, yeah, that's the danger of None like, of his shit. There was nothing in his paperwork that was fucking, you know what I mean? Right. And he's the first person to ever pull up on me and hand me their shit. Kevo did, yeah. Yeah. Pulled up in a Rolls Royce, no security. Jewelry on and handed me all this paperwork. That's wild. Gotta respect it. You gotta respect it. Um, shit. Anything else we should cover? Anything else we got going on? I'm not gonna lie, I'm fucking boiling right here. <laughs> I it's think pretty we, I think, fucking hot. I here. think we covered a a good amount of shit. A good amount of shit. What uh? What's what's the near future hold for 1090 Jake? You got anything in place, or how how motivated would you say you are to grind out this content versus just living the good life? It's a mix of both, bro. Cause you know I'm living the good life, but I imagine one better. I want to keep expanding, get richer, mm. and just take shit as far as I can take it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in a weird position because sometimes I feel like I'm just working too much. That I have ideas for more content I want to make. Even just seeing all these rappers getting on Instagram Live and streaming together and just having these conversations and stuff, it's like, I do want to do more of that. But at the same time, it's like, well, I'm already fucking working so many fucking hours out of every week. I look at my calendar. It's like I don't really have that much time. It's kind of like it's tough to make choices about where you're going to put your energy, you know? Yeah, sometimes things just seem to work out. Yeah. So as long as you're putting energy into the right shit, you just let things work out how they work out. My advice to you is... You should build out your team more so that you can focus on the stuff that only you can do, which is like, you know, saying the videos or coming up with a concept and stuff. But maybe if you have somebody that helps you put together the scripts or you have an editor, it could be like instead of you spending 12 hours on a video, you spend four hours on the video and then everybody else takes care of all the other shit and then right. you're able to get the ball rolling on other videos. You could put out more stuff or you could just have more time to have you know, a normal life. Nah, yeah, if you got anybody you recommend behind the scenes, oh, let me that's, know. That's the hard part, yeah. Because I don't fucking know people <laughs> like that. I don't really fuck with yeah. people like that. Nah, because you got to try like 10 bad employees before we find a yeah, good one. That's yeah, that's the thing is it's tough. And then once I'm playing with money, like I don't like playing with my money. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if I'm doing business with somebody, it's like... I know they official. Shout out to my boy Remo, because I got to give it to him. Like, Thanks. He's one dude that I like, oh, I fucking really found like an invaluable employee right That's there that dog. I can actually yeah. trust to help me come up with questions talk, and all this I'll kind like of on shit. on a weekly fucking basis. He's talking to everybody. Yeah. He's a slippery fuck. Yeah, shout out to him. He's probably talking to the ops. <laughs> I don't know about no, that. No, he said no. He's doing what he needs to do. <laughs> Definitely. All right, 1090, one of my favorite people in this game. Appreciate you coming on. It's great. Having a conversation. For sure. Much love. Everybody, tune in to the End of Sentence channel. 1090 everything. Any last words? Rockin' with Charlie. Y'all rockin' with me. There it is. And for this one, we out. <laughs>